Good morning, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check? Let me know if you guys can hear me, if you guys can uh, see the screen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right. Awesome. Good morning, everybody. All right, the market is still into a chop, so I can't promise anything today, but we're going to take it very slow, pretty much the same way we started the day yesterday. <laughs> okay. All right, so just a quick reminder of, of how things are going to run today and what we will cover today. And I didn't forget about my promise of hosting a mini lecture for everybody here about position sizing and the importance of position sizing. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, welcome to the open house. My name is Anka Metcalf. Uh, I'm gonna be the head trader today. So basically I will show you a little bit of how I run things in the trading room and how I personally trade. This is a quick disclaimer. Everything that we're saying here is basically for educational purpose only. It should not be construed as investing advice or trading advice. So you need to make your own trading decisions. You know where to find me by now. It's tradeoutloud.com and you can find me on social media. My handle is tradeoutloud. And here are some rules. All right. So first of all, no questions in the first hour. The first hour of trading is the first hour in the morning from 930 um, to pretty much 1030 is dedicated to trading solely. That's where I focus. That's where I make my money uh, in the market in the first hour in the power hour. Uh, I will allocate plenty of time uh, towards the uh, end of the session, and I will address each and every single question. I'm not going to leave until all the questions are answered. Uh, I know there was a question uh, yesterday, and one member in the room uh, asked if, in regards to the prop program if uh, he needs to join the trading room or one of the programs, one of the educational programs. And the answer is no, you can trade on your own, test your ability, see how you do. This is the best way to do it without risking literally your capital. I mean, think about it, $500 gets you access to $50,000 or $1,000 gets you access to $100,000. So this is your opportunity to shine. Uh, implement what you already know and see the areas where you need help with and then, you know, start from there. Uh, small accounts can participate in trading as well. You can use micros. I highly recommend position sizing for each and every single trade. Uh, I do recommend between 1% and 2% uh, risk uh, per trade per the account size. Uh, what I typically do in a rough environment, I look to take partial profits along the way. Typically, a target one, I uh, take half of my profit out. I try to bring my stop to break even if the volatility is not too high. And then if that potential break even represents a new support zone. And then I scale out the last time that I scale out is another quarter and that is at target two. So if the trade hits target two, I'm gonna scale out again. And this is in a rough trading environment where you don't have continuity. If you have a market where we have continuity, then I may trail the whole entire position and all the instructions are going to be mentioned in the room. And then the last lot, my last quarter lot, I will be keeping active. And from that point on, it's just trailing, it's just moving into targets beyond uh, target three, four, and so on uh, and so on. For example, if I call a trade, let's say I'm going to be calling a trade in DSMP. I may be calling a trade at 45.25. That represents the entry price. If I call a stop at 45.20, that represents the stop price. So it will be represented as ES. L or S, meaning long or short, the entry price is going to be the first price and the second price is going to be the stop price. And then uh, we are going to post, I'm going to post the targets and we are talking in the pre-market game plan. I'm looking at the clock right now. Uh, the morning goes by so fast. So um, 
Uh, I will be also mentioning uh, the target levels in the pre-market game plan along with the actual trade. We will be discussing active targets. All trades will be called on the microphone. You will hear me call the trades and also you will see the trades posted in the trading room. However, if there is a momentum trade or if there is a trade that is setting up on a very small time frame, such as a one minute or a two minute, I may not have time to type because I am taking the trade as well. And <clears throat> I need to set up my position sizing and to uh, or make arrangements for my orders as well. So in those particular cases, which are rare because we really don't do a lot of impulse trading, but in those particular cases, you guys are going just to hear the uh, trade called on the mic. All right, so what to expect? We're going to dive into the pre-market game plan for the major indices for gold and for oil. We're going to be analyzing the context macro to micro. We're going to go over the news and uh, earnings. In fact, earnings today, not a, a whole bunch. We're waiting for Disney and we're waiting for the CPI numbers tomorrow. So tomorrow may be a little bit more exciting than today and tomorrow because we're getting uh, we're going to be getting a lot of volatility. We're going to try to identify opportunities as they come along. And then simply we're going to be waiting for a trade. So we're not going to, as soon as the opening bell hits, we're not going to be hitting the buy or the sell button. So once again, we focus on any style of trading, whether it's day trading, swing trade, swing trading, momentum, pattern trading, um, uh, price action trading, any kind of style of trading um, we implement in the room. Uh, I trade a variety of strategies. So um, whenever I see a strategy that is fit for a, uh, relatively high odds trades because we love our money uh, and we need to get only in trades that are um, really a five star trade or a four star trade. Um, so other than that, uh, I think we're pretty much set for today. These are the earnings uh, tonight after the close. Disney will be reported earnings. I think Disney is going to have a big splash into the market because it's one of the uh, last components of the Dow. Uh, and uh, Dow has been pretty robust and pretty strong lately. So it may make a little bit of a splash tomorrow uh, at the open. Make sure that tomorrow you tune in earlier because we're going to jump right into trading. We're going to skip the intro because you guys know it by now. Uh, and we're going to get right into the analysis uh, right from nine o'clock. So this is Disney tomorrow. And then um, on Thursday before the open. So before we meet, Baba will be reporting earnings. And again, that may make a splash in NASDAQ. Uh, and uh, we're going to have uh, two indices tomorrow that will be main focus, and that is NASDAQ, and we have the Dow. Um, economic releases for today, uh, we have uh, we have the CPI numbers that are coming uh, in tomorrow at 8.30, but today we don't have any releases. So the market may, you know, pretty much drift. We have crude oil inventories at 10.30. I typically do not trade crude oil until after 10.30 if there is a pattern. And I see it, I see a big advance of over 1% in the overnight trading session that we will be discussing right away. So this is pretty much what we are going to be expecting. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to be shifting the screen to the major indices right now. So you guys could see the screen and we're going to jump in. All right. All right, here we go. I just wanted to make sure that I make arrangements. I have my active trader on so we can um, can get going. All right. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So, all right. So you guys can see the screen. Okay, cool. Pretty cool. All right, so let's get started, everybody. First of all, why am okay? First of all, I have the indices on a fifteen minute. We're going to be evaluating them on the fifteen minute, but uh, uh, you know, just uh, to get started, just because we had a bit more chop into the uh, overnight trading session, and uh, 
uh, then we're going to evaluate the macro to micro. So first of all, uh, the Dow is unchanged. So pretty much is more robust, is, is just holding really well. Uh, we have the S&P, which is unchanged as well. It's only up four points. That's not very significant. NASDAQ, again, is pretty much flat. It's up 14 points. Totally, like I said, not significant. So basically, we are hovering into the close uh, from yesterday. And then we have, again, um, Russell, which, again, is in line with all the other indices. So right before the open, we have symmetry. We don't have any divergence in between the indices. We're seeing prices higher in oil. So this uh, – uh, this is pretty constructive. We did mention in the trading room within the past few weeks that oil has targeted into $83, $84. And if it breaks 84 to 85, it may start moving a lot higher and it may start moving towards the 90 on a macro level, 90 to 94. So it has a lot of tradable void to the upside. So we can go crazy on that side. And then we have GC, which is, uh, again, a little bit under pressure, not too much, it's relatively flat, as you guys can see. Uh, and it's just shopping and open at 8 o'clock, and it's just shopping around, no significant moves so far. All right, so now we're going to get into the nitty-gritty analysis and pre-plan. And again, for today, we were very fortunate to have some pretty good, interesting uh, institutional levels that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. All right, so we're going to start with NASDAQ, uh, and we have, wow, we have a lot of time until the open. All right, so NASDAQ, as you guys can see, uh, very bullish. This is the high, this is the monthly chart, and this is the high from uh, the post-pandemic uh, effect, right? So uh, this was the low of the pandemic. This is the high of the post-pandemic, and this is the pullback that occurred uh, last year. This is the rotation that started to digest the price and digest the lows off of this 50 simple moving average uh, starting with October. So in October, we started being very, very bullish in our swing trading program and also into our futures program. The majority of the trades that we took are long trades, and that is because we trade with the velocity and with the, with the institutional power players. Um, so basically, if you look through our portfolio, you will see that we had very few shorts, especially into last year and this year. Um, we have uh, had, since this breakout, one, two, three, four, five months to the upside, like continuous new highs. The month is still young. Typically, NASDAQ and uh, the S&P, along with Russell, don't have that track record of seasonality of making new highs uh, into the month of August, but the Dow does. So Dow is a little bit stronger in the summer months than uh, the rest of the indices. So as you can see right here from the monthly chart, uh, we have topped off at a psychological level of 16,000. This is very interesting the way it is set up right here because it is set to break out higher. So if throughout this month, I'm not saying today, I'm not saying this week, but I'm just saying if this month we're going to start trading over 16,000 and we're not that far away from that point, we can see an advance higher going into September, maybe into October. The trajectory is so clear of challenging the prior high that we had in last November. That's the latest high that we had in NASDAQ, November of 2022. So this is the uh, trajectory, 16,767. Now, when we're looking at NASDAQ at uh, a weekly level, we could see that we have a... Uh, tap down into a confluence level. This is a massive confluence level. First of all, NASDAQ is still weekly into a massive trend. You can see the beautiful equidistance uh, between the uh, um, 10 exponential moving average and the 20 simple moving average. You can see that all the moving averages are fanning out towards, uh, towards the upside. So that means that it may have another projection higher. We also notice that if you look at the 10 exponential moving average, which is this one right here, you notice that every single time the price got a little bit elevated and it caught a bubble of air underneath, it tended to base and then it snapped back up or 
it just pulled back into the 10 EMA. So the 10 EMA on the weekly in NASDAQ is literally the happening place. So today, I don't think that we're going to have, you know, a very significant move in the market just because CPI numbers are tomorrow. But we have a pretty good chance if the CPI numbers are in line uh, with uh, everything and with the market trajectory, uh, it is very possible that we may have a rotation back to the upside. Uh, from the daily chart, we're seeing some selling pressure from the 10 EMA and the 20 SMA price is trading underneath. So every single time when the price is trading below the MAs is getting a little bit of uh, uh, let's say selling pressure, bearish connotation. Uh, but at the same time, we are still trading above the 50 simple moving average. So the price is caught, I call it in a spider web, right? It's called in the MA web. So that means that the price action is stuck in between moving averages. Think about a fly that gets into a spider web, really hard to get out of that spider web, right? It's sticky. It's stuff is pretty much going to stay there for a longer period of time and die there, right? But the price is not going to die here. But this is what uh, I, I just wanted to make that analogy so you understand that when the price is caught in between these moving averages, uh, you need an external factor, you need narrative, you need some fundamental effect that will snap it either above or below the MAs and then start the new, tra uh, the new price trajectory. So for example, if we start trading, we have a bullish above level. This is the one hour chart. If the price should be trading over 15,430 throughout the trading session today, this will be bullish. So this will be the launch pad or a further progression higher to 15,500. We break over that 500, we will start continuing higher into the 15,600. And you can see here that we have notations on our indicator to stay long. So this is not gonna be a shorting opportunity. Anything that trades above these blue lines is going to be bullish. And it shows you that you need to stay long. Shorting is not going to be an option. Shorts in downtrends are not optimum because they can signify very, uh, very small pullbacks. They can create very small pullbacks, very shallow pullbacks, and then they can snap back up because the institutional money is still to the long side. Uh, however, if we start testing the 340 level, you can see here that we also have a support level, but we have a potential pullback to 260. So pullback right around into this area. And then we have the prior low, and that's from yesterday. So yes, that's a given. That's going to be another support zone into the 200, uh, 200 level. So this is the course of NASDAQ. NASDAQ, at this point, it's neutral because it's trading in between two critical levels, uh, uh, bullish above and bearish below. So we're going to treat it as such. We need to see it over 400 to be 100% completely bullish on it, or it, we need to see it under 40. But we need to see it under 40 and find a pattern under 40. So it's not just, oh my God, I hit 40. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get short. No, you need to see, you need to see it dive. You need to see a pullback, and then you need to see a strategy that will align into the 40. It's not going to be that easy. Okay. All right. So um, the mini SMP, it's pretty much into the same context. We also have some levels onto, onto it as well. You can see here from the daily that is caught into the MA web. You can see the top down on the weekly chart back into the 10 EMA. You can see the same context as uh, NASDAQ into the monthly chart. And now into the daily chart, we have a bullish above level uh, into the 45.36, bullish above level, 45.31. We do have resistance into the 45, so it's going to come very gradual and it's going to need a lot to start moving, okay, because it has resistance over resistance over resistance. So it's going to be uh, into those resistance shocks before it starts going. We also have a declining 200 into the 50 zone. So that's going to be very interesting to see how uh, that's going to play out. And then we have stay long into the 59th, into the 60 area. So the price is going to pretty much shift 
into this area, we know that shorting is not going to be an option. We also have a massive confluence area of support from 15 all the way to 10. And we know that the whole number represents also a really hefty area of support. We noticed that from yesterday. You can see that it did a slingshot. This was just to take the traders out. And then we're going to talk about something that was very impressive. Do you guys remember yesterday when I was telling you guys that this is not after we took our trade and when we uh, we um, had a winning trade, but then uh, we noticed that the price action was not going anywhere. And I said, there's no plan of action at this point, but it is rotation time. So we may have short squeezes. Look at the short squeeze. OK, so these happened. As we were talking, and I was, I, was, I was giving a little mini lecture in yesterday. So this is into the end of the day. This was the start, guys. And I was telling you about the 1030 prime time trigger time. This is when it happened. You see the doji and the rotation. Let's take a look at YM. And that was pretty much across all the indices. And I love the fact that you were able to see it in real time, how you can too read the chart the way I do. And you can predict what can happen uh into the next uh into the next time sequence based on the technical pattern so important and then in the dow like i said the weekly chart of uh, the weekly chart is pretty much into a kind of like a sandwich situation it's hovering it has plenty of support into the 35000 below 35 and even above the 35 with 100 points uh the uh, monthly chart is very similar to the uh, other indices uh the daily chart however guys this is so important because there is no other index that is in this situation look at where the price is it's above the 20 price action today hovered above the 10 exponential moving average it's in the clear it's not in the web if it starts breaking into this uh just below this the 300 just around in this area okay then it'll enter into a little bit more bearish type of pullback and that is the time when we would say yeah maybe we can catch a short uh, but other than that, longs are uh, the way to go here. Uh, like I said, in this kind of chop, longs and shorts are acceptable. Uh, but uh, in this market, I mean, I haven't had an open house ever where the market, were, uh, the, where the price action was this sideways. And in fact, you could see here on the one hour chart that the price action is right in the middle of the range. You could not get it. You could not get a stinkier type of pattern than what we have here. Okay. So we have it in the core of the range. It's horrible where it's at. It's going to be bullish over 500. There's going to be, uh, so all the trades right now and everything that is going to line up, it's pretty much going to have a 50 50 chance. So that's terrible because we're trading in the core of the range. We don't have a bullish bias. We don't have a bearish bias. It is just in the middle of the range. Anything that sets up in the middle of the range is garbage. You have a very thin chance of working the trade out. Based on the macro levels, however, the Dow is the only one that has a little bit more chances to the upside. Other than that, and that's because it's outside of that web. But other than that, the rest of the indices may be still into a lot of pressure. You can get in long, get triggered in, and then get stopped out. Or you can get in short, and you can get triggered in, and then you can get stopped out very easily. So um, it, it's, it's going to be a pure chop. OK, pure chop today. We do have a level of uh, support back into yesterday's low into the 35, uh, 109. And then we have RTY. We're seconds away from the open. All right. Three seconds from the open and ding, ding, ding. Pretty much. All right. Here we go. We're off to the races. All right. We're going to continue with uh, Russell. We don't have the. Uh, uh, any institutional levels on Russell. Russell needs to get above 1980. It takes out the 80. It's very clear. It's defined by this 200 simple moving average. It takes out the 80. It's going to move higher. Other than that, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, so we're going to have to wait. Again, if you look at the level, this is a little bit more declining than what we have in the rest of the indices. So um I, I, I'm not very excited about the downside or the upper side in Russell. So this one, we're going to have to have a little bit more information on because we don't have, uh, you know, a lot of say. We have a we have a critical level above the 80s. 
uh, that would coincide to this level right here, which would become uh, bullish. But until then, it's just chopping around. And then uh, let's evaluate GC as well. GC, not a lot of progress. Uh, GC is just into a lot of support here into the 1950. It's just balancing out. We're going to have to wait and see uh, what the deal is with the, uh, with this uh, technical pattern. Typically under 50, it can start sliding a little bit lower into the 40s, into the 20s. And if it takes out the 80s, it's going to have a snap back up into the 2000. And last index is oil, which little, literally made a new high, the overnight trading session, beautiful base, by the way, in the overnight. So if you trade the overnight session, if you're somewhere in the world where you can uh, easily trade the session, this was a beautiful breakout, a takeout of prior resistance highs uh, from this, uh, uh, from yesterday, from uh, from this week and from last, <clears throat> last week. <clears throat> excuse me, and initiating new highs. It does have a lot of room for higher. Uh, right now, it looks like it wants to go to the um, uh, to this 20 SMA here onto the monthly chart towards the 85 to 86. Uh, and um, other than that, it has room to go to 90 and 100. So it has a lot of tradable void above. All right, so uh, time to roll up our sleeves and I'm going to put the uh, screen up so we can start. Let me just, okay, here we go. Uh, there was this light from the camera that it was just uh, getting in my face. So now what we're going to be doing is basically waiting for some trades to line up. And I will let you know. All right. <clears throat> I will let you know what we're looking at. Okay. Once again, um, I am not going to look into the chat this morning. Uh, I will answer if you have questions. Um, you know, please hold for about an hour until we're done with trading, and then I'll answer all the questions. Because if you post your questions now, you risk that uh, other questions will come up and it's they're going to get lost with others. All right. They're going to get lost in the chat. Okay. All right. Why am I starting the day pretty volatile? YM is back into the four into that 350, and we're seeing already a reaction into it. Uh, NASDAQ is back into support as well. Remember, these levels are valid. However, this doesn't necessarily mean pull back to 260 immediately. Like I said, you need to see the link down. You need to see a shallow pullback. And then so you need to see a strategy that is lining up below that dotted line. So far, we're getting strong reaction in uh, in the Dow. So it may be looking that Dow is the one that we need to focus on today. Let's see. Over 420 looks bullish. Over 420 looks like it wants to go to 460 to 470. I'm not taking it yet. We have some highs from yesterday from uh, yeah, from yesterday's trading session at 425 in the Dow. That's where we closed. I mean, we didn't close. We hit those highs and then we closed just a little bit lower than that into the 400 zone. We were chomping around between 400 and 420. Okay, so now... 
what I'm looking at is to see if there is any divergence in between the indices. So that means is there one, if there is one index that is accelerating lower faster, that may change the dynamic even into the strongest index. So if we have, for example, all three indices uh, weak, and we have uh, Dow strong, Dow is just gonna be the last one that is gonna participate in into the um, bearish side. So careful here, there's a lot of price analysis. You don't just see it and take it immediately. You just wait for confirmation and wait to see what the other indices are doing as well. Synchronicity throughout indices, is very important. So far, we have synchronicity in the uh, s and and NASDAQ and Russell. We have fluidity to the downside. And then uh, we have uh, YM that is trying to hold. So a lot of chop. Uh, like I said, today we can expect a lot of chop. Uh, tomorrow we have the CPI numbers, long awaited. Okay, sitting and watching, sitting and watching. I'm noticing that YM is pretty well structured. I'm going to move right now to the 15 minute, the, to the five minute, I'm sorry, from the 15 minute to the five minute. We have a little minor resistance here from this high, that's why I was mentioning that 420 zone. So let's see, let's see bullish or bearish. Anything goes today, anything goes today. So because we're in the core of the range. The Dow is uh, not giving up. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look right now uh, through the indices to see what's going on. So I'm seeing UNH holding beautifully, Goldman Sachs holding, uh, Home Depot uh, possible uh, rotation for the trading day. So that's actually very bullish. Uh, we have uh, JP Morgan that is also holding. Uh, and by the way, it's right at that 20 SMA. Uh, Caterpillar is moving back up, uh, and it had a little gap up today. Uh, Johnson & Johnson strong, Procter & Gamble strong. We have Boeing, which is a little bit sideways, but yesterday had a brand new high where everything, uh, all the other stocks were melting down. This had a, another high. Uh, Walmart challenging yesterday's high with a brand new high. So we have a lot of strength into the Dow stocks. Uh, let's take a quick look right now into the NASDAQ stocks. NASDAQ a little bit weaker. We're seeing Apple, Microsoft sideways. Uh, Amazon trying to get into a gap fill at this point. We have Tesla holding. Uh, semiconductors are holding. Uh, Meta's holding the trend, NVIDIA, but they're on the verge of like, I don't know, like make it or break it. They're into that line in the sand, by the way. Uh, pins, pretty strong. Costco, very strong. Rotation on the daily. Uh, we have Comcast sideways and trying to move up a little bit. We have Cisco holding. Not a bad environment. So um, yeah, we're going to have to still... I uh, see what the deal is. We may have a big fleece 
in the market today. You may have that fleece. Okay, so I'm looking right now through um through some okay dk for those of you that are trading stocks dk breakout massive breakout this is good on small time frames along with higher time frames dk breakout alert uh there are a lot of stocks already that are taking off like vst edu with a rotation DK that I mentioned, it's right into that positioning. Halliburton, yay! Go Halliburton. <laughs> We're in Halliburton in the swing program. Um, ABBV, this one is pretty interesting because it's on a verge, a breakout. Walmart, as usual, Boeing strong. Financials are grinding, grinding, grinding. Here's the mini paparuni here. Like I said, don't get very excited about the short side because we may get, uh, it's again, it's a 50-50 day at this point. 50-50 day. Okay, so we identify some power moves right now. Let's, uh, I'm going to check it on my scanner to see if there's anything going on. Because we're picking up signals. And if there are certain stocks that are moving, they, uh, they're likely to impact our indices. So um, that's why I check for them. The stock VST is Vista Corp. is woo. Snapping, ripping higher today. Momentum weakening a little bit. So we're approaching, we have literally seconds, one, actually, yeah, less than a minute away uh, from the first week sequence from 930 to 945. And so far, we're getting a little bit more bearish on the move. Yeah, so I'm seeing I'm seeing some um very contradicting effects here. So the pulse is to the upside and not to the downside in stocks, which is kind of not in sync with what the futures are doing right now. Let me just take a quick look here. And remember, we don't have any releases today. We have just the crude oil inventory set 1030. That's it.
All right. Noticing that the Dow is still holding, we're getting a rotation in. It's pretty good. Dow is gonna still be top watch. In fact, we may have parameters for the Dow. There's a tiny, uh, there's a very aggressive entry within the five minute range. You guys can see it right here. I'm not, I don't want to do this like a five minute up over 400. We have this doji here as well. And it's coming at 945. So the timing is perfect. I still think we should go with the 420 instead of, because we could, we could get this price rejected from this. 200 SMA here, which, which is going to be tricky. All right. Let's take the Dow long, we're two zero. We're gonna take it over this high and we're gonna place our stop below the low right here, below, uh, below three, four, zero. So we're gonna be playing this chunk right here at this range. So um, ideally we wanna see this candle close above this 20th of May because that's gonna bring a little bit more um, pressure into it. And then we're looking for targets. Obviously, one of the targets is going to be into the 440 because we have that 50 SMA uh, into the next resistance, into the 60s. Then we have the 80s. And there we could actually slide into the 500. 500 is going to be additional target. Okay, uh, same here with the S&P. The S&P could be a potential rotation as well. This could be bullish or both. I'm not going to do it. I'm only going to stick with YM, but it could be bullish over 17. It could be a squeeze into 18 and things are going to be in a limbo at 18. There are no guarantees that we're going to break the 18. Here's another clue that the price action may be ready um, for a decision soon. It's going to be bullish above 15 to 16 now, and it's going to be bearish below 10. All right, so I'm getting ready. Place my order. NASDAQ is uh, setting up for a short squeeze. This is going to be telling in NASDAQ if the price is going to get over 305, 306. It's going to start moving to 320 to 324. However, it's go if it's going to do a weak pattern in here, that's going to be shortable. Let's just sit and wait. Remember, before we get into any kind of trade, we evaluate the entry, we evaluate the stop, and we evaluate the position size. These are the critical levels. You don't just jump in a trade just because you like it or just because you want to go like long or short or whatever the case is. You need to have straight parameters. You only can determine... If you have a good trade, only if you know where your stop is. So you know your position sizes. So no Hail Mary. All 
All right. Ah, the S&P is weakening here as well. The S&P is still into the chop zone, so. See, we're already, um, we did have a pullback from uh, 260, uh, I'm sorry, from uh, 340 to 260 right here. I did not take this since the risk for this trade was completely asymmetric, was a really huge, huge, huge risk. Um, and here, there's an opportunity in ES for a short. Not loving it because we're approaching 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock reversal time. Um, here's the thing with the SMP. Uh, the trade, the parameters would be somewhere 4508, 4509 to 4508 for the entry. The stop would be 4516. And this is what I don't like. I don't like because the target is 4507.5 and the next target is 4504. So I don't know if it's going to have continuity just because NASDAQ has already achieved support here. I mean, you guys can see the levels are right here. Like I said, I'm very conservative. I want to make sure that you know, I have a lot of responsibility in the room to getting all the traders into my trades. So if they're copying me. So. We're seeing some bottoming tails. Like I said, I'm not in any trades at this moment. See, gold looks like it wants to go to 53. Not a lot of room. So like I said, you know, even if you have a setup, it doesn't really have a lot of room to move. Look at the volatility in oil. This is crazy. This is really crazy. All right, now's the moment of truth because see, YM is not doing uh, anything. It's just holding, so that's a really good sign for the bulls, but if it starts bleeding, We need five more minutes. Um, NASDAQ really needs to pull back a little bit um, in order to have a trade. Uh, take a look at where NASDAQ is and has massive confluence support. On the daily is right on the 50 SMA. This is the daily. Uh, on the one hour, it it went exactly, well, not to 250, 250, but it went to 263. Okay, so <laughs> close enough. So see our support zone right here. Um, 
and pretty much it's holding a little bit that area into 10 o'clock. It may do a short squeeze. That means that people that were short here may want to take some profits. That's massive support in NASDAQ right here. And if NASDAQ, by the way, I mean, it's not set in stone. I mean, it could break the support. And if it breaks the support, then it has room to go into yesterday's low, which is 218. So basically in the 200 zone. And then we be getting ready for some short squeezes. I want to see the 30 minute here. 30 minute looks bad in the S&P. 30 minute looks still like it wants to bleed in S&P. So does the one hour. This is fairly weak. It's on confluence support here. So there is a lot of, there is a decision that needs to be made. Uh, I like the skinny doji here that may have the potential to run to 4520 in about three minutes, maybe setting up. And the entry would be the support. So over 15. So just watch it, just watch it. These are really crappy trades that, you know, we have right now and we have a pretty crappy environment. So um, so over 16, so this is what I'm uh, suggesting here that in about two minutes, not now. We need to see another buildup, another candle that is going to take out 16. You can use a stop just below this low under 08. Okay. And then, but the reason why I'm saying they're crappy is because the risk to reward is totally asymmetric. Your target is going to be 20. Okay. So you may be entering at 16. You may want to go only for four points. But your stop is going to be right here at 4507. So that's why it's crappy. It's the risk to reward, reward ratio is asymmetric. You're applying more risk to make just very little money. Uh, and on my strategy, the strategy that I uh, that I trade, I look for uh, for a, uh, for the possibility for the index to have room to run. And then if the size to run, most of the time it's just gonna start um, delivering. A lot better. I'm loving the tail in Russell. Um, the five minute looks good. It's just testing that 10 EMA. So I do have my order in in YM, but I'm looking for other opportunities as well. 15 minute inside bar. This may do a squeeze as, as well. Um, we have uh, 10 seconds into a new decision. And if the price is going to take out this high, 1948.6, it's going to run into 50 and it's going to run into 51. But again, the risk is asymmetric. You would have to put your risk under 42 or under 40. Under 40, if you think that you have a good chance into the 55, 57-ish zone. All right. Not a lot of improvement, by the way, in NASDAQ and in ES. So. All right, I have my order in, guys. All right, here we go, order filled. Order filled in the Dow. So we're officially in the Dow. And here is the... Uh, Little Russell, like I said, I'm not participating in uh, any other trades right here. Uh, keep an eye on the Dow. The Dow's first target is 440. We have short squeezes all along, all through these um, levels right here. Even NASDAQ has an inside and out possibility. Um, Right here, it can go to 300 or 315. Okay, we're one point shy. Here we go. One point for the velocity is pretty good at this point. I'm not scaling out. 
You could have your own plan. You could scale out. You could do whatever you want. It's your plan. It's your account. I'm just telling you what I'm doing at this moment. We have an influx of momentum and we have some volume that is coming in. I don't know if it's going to stick around, but we have some pretty good volume. We have a target two into the 450. I think we're going to be trailing this one. We're going to be a little bit laid back on this one. We'll see. If we have strong rotational patterns in these indices in, in NASDAQ and Russell and uh, S&P, uh, why is going to be the first one that is going to kick in and start delivering? We also have a 30 minute rotation. I want to show you guys. So this is coming in saying, so I want to look for that perfection in the pattern before I take the trade. So we already had a 30 minute rotation. That was one of the other things that I want to have time frame synchronicity. And uh, the one hour is looking pretty good. Take a look at the one hour. Okay. So it, I would say that it has a uh, it has a pretty good chance of getting into the 475 if the momentum will continue. And that is if the momentum will continue. Remember, this is a really crappy trading environment that we're in right now. All right, we're hanging out into the 40s. Uh, if we are going to get a print of 450, we're snapping into the 60. And again, because of the overnight activity and the choppiness, uh, and the way, in the choppiness of the way the price came in, uh, that that is going to create uh, the, the that's creating the small targets. We need a little bit more momentum build up in the weakest indices such as Nasdaq, S and P. See the beautiful Doji here. Like I said. You know, you got to pick whatever, you know, has confluence. So I trade with confluence. I don't, I never hop in trades just because, you know, um, I'm not an impulse trader. And that's the reason why I was able to grow my account super fast and get it to a level where I don't need to grow my account anymore. So we need to, we need now the 450 print. And if we get a 450 print, we're getting a sandwich. That's a sandwich, ladies and gentlemen. We need to get that triggered. We need a print of 46 to 47, and then we need a print of 50. Thirty minute looks good. Uh, one hour looks good. Four hours back up with a tail, but still, still has three hours to run. My stop remains the same. I'm not making any changes to the stop. Based on the technicals on any level, we can't lift the stop. So the stop remains unchanged. Popper is doing a sandwich on the 15 minute. Bonds are doing a sandwich on the 15 minute. Euro is spiking higher. Natural gas, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. At 7 a.m., it was very active. It triggered a 15 minute. Joe, I'm, I haven't looked through the chat. I don't know if you saw the activity in natural gas. 
let's just put natural gas here. Oops. <laughs> and again, I saw this was the breakout of six, seven o'clock. This was the breakout. <laughs> just crazy. Just crazy. They, they happen before the open and before eight o'clock, before I get a chance to look, I don't look at charts at seven o'clock. So look at this breakout, guys. Oh, my goodness. Massive, gorgeous. And I was telling you that um, copper with a sandwich right here. So if it breaks uh, this three. Uh, yeah, I just triggered. So here into the 380. 380, it's going to snap up probably uh, wants to go to 382, uh, 382.25, 382.25, and possibly into this high, 382.53. Okay. See what else? Yeah, the euro is strengthening a little bit. Heating oil is very strong. Our Bob gasoline got left behind a little bit. I, oh, platinum had a new low. Uh, Rikishi UNG, target one and target two. You want to get it into 10 bucks. I mean, this one, this one is a law haul. There's no target one and target two. Overall target into the 10 EMA on the monthly and trail it into that. Trail it into that. All right. Oil inventory numbers coming in super fast. Notice the volatility. Like it's really hard to get in and out. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, I imagined. Yeah, no worries. Okay, so we're getting some bear buildups in NASDAQ and S&P, even in the Dow. Keep the hard stop in the Dow. Don't make any changes to it. SMP, I don't know about SMP. Like I said, it's such a crappy environment right now. Um, under 07 may have a continuation lower. May I'm not excited about it, but it may. Yes, this is the ThinkOrSwim platform. I don't know, guys. It's 10 o'clock. We should be rotating, uh, rotating back up. And we should be consolidating here. See, if this time we take out the 300 and now stock, this is going to have a big squeeze back into the 335. And I'm thinking of adding to uh, YM as if it's a separate trade. So don't freak out. Tell you what I'm doing. But we'll see, we're not into that point yet. And we're getting weaker in the doubt, which is kind of weird at this point, because take a look at NASDAQ, taking some profits here, trying to hold. 
Russell rotating back to the downside. Three, four, zero is the stop. That's one R. That's one R. We had a drama bar on the five minute at 10.05. And we're pretty much stabilizing right now. Let's see if this if this candle is going to hold. Watching smaller time frames. This is a little support here in between 250 and 260. See how mixed everything is. What once was the strongest index that had the best chance of rotating higher came back to test support. This is algos. These are algos. These are not traders doing this. I don't think there are a lot of traders, um, you know, playing today. They're waiting for the CPI numbers tomorrow. The 15 minute and NASDAQ looks pretty good. I'm going to give it a shot in NASDAQ on the 15 minute. So I'm going to take this high at 3.06. Gonna place my stop below this low and give it a shot. And this is gonna be long and short. Okay, so here's how it's gonna be. NASDAQ first trade is gonna be long. Let's see the timing. Oh, we may get a better entry in about two minutes. All right, let's keep it as such for the time being. So uh, the entry is gonna have a small change though, I think it's gonna be 305 versus 307. No, 307, 307, 307 for the long. And the stop is going to have to be this low into the 260, 260. All right, and then we have NASDAQ short. I'm not so convinced about the NASDAQ short situation, so I'm not going to release the numbers just yet. Okay, but make sure if you decide to get in, if you decide to take my trade, you take my entry. You don't take it here thinking that, oh, I'm just going to get a better entry. No, because you need to have the confirmation that the price is ready to go higher. And at this point, you don't have anything. You're getting yourself into a trade that will have 90% chances of stopping out. So you need to respect the parameters for the trade. All right. Uh, the target is going to be into the 325. And then the rest to be decided. It all, it's all by price action. We'll see. All right. Now, there's a decision in this uh Look at the volatility that came in. These are machines, guys. These are machines. Let's take this to the 15. Nice. Doji, doji, indecision. And we have 15 here. Uh, see, this one, if, it, if Russell breaks 40, this one has room to 31, back to 31. I don't want to put a lot of trades on today because it's so choppy. But I like NASDAQ to the long side. And we're still in the Dow. I'm thinking of a five minute tail here to play on that tail strength and to add at 381. Let's see what my average would be. So. Okay. 
All right, I was watching something. Okay. All right, so if I would get it, let's say into the 385, not a big deal. I'll get an average of 400. Four oh four oh two four oh three. Time will tell. All right. And okay, I gotta get ready for the short side as well. Okay, so if NASDAQ is not gonna trigger the sh the long side, it's gonna have a bear sandwich to the downside. So see that support into the 262, that becomes a bearish below. So the bearish below would be 260. The stop would be three, 307. All right, so you understand what I'm looking at? It's gonna be bullish above this level and it's gonna be bearish below this level right here. Whatever triggers first. No, I haven't added. Yeah, Brad, I haven't added. Yeah. It's such a choppy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let, uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know if I add, but I haven't added. Okay. Order placed in NASDAQ because I forgot to put it. That was funny. So I, I'm just, I haven't added to uh, to the Dow trade. Russell's still weak. But rotating. So I'm going to keep it on the 15 minute to keep an eye on it. The problem here is with the Dow is that I really didn't know whether... See, what I should have done, Brad, in, in the Dow is basically add when it was trading here, way below, and have the stop at, have the same stop uh, into the 340. That would have brought a better average, but like 403 or something like that, it's not such a great not such a great area. All right, 10 minutes into oil inventory numbers. So if you guys are playing oil, make sure that you adjust uh, your stops. I don't trade oil before inventory numbers. Okay. All right. I got to tell you, since we've been hosting the open houses, we've never had such a dull uh, trading environment. See, NASDAQ uh, is taking its time. NASDAQ should have uh, should have bounced a little bit harder. Uh, the daily is sitting, uh, the, the daily is literally sitting on the 50 SMA. I mean, take a look. Daily is still hitting on 50 SMA. This is strong. This is very strong. Uh, now, the four hour is back into support. High, lower high, lower high. Now, if it breaks down below, this is this is why we're playing it to the downside in case. This is sort of a hedge to, uh, towards our YM. It's not a favorite. So on a scale from one to five, this would, again, would be like two and a half, three. It's not a big deal. The 30 minute is getting weaker and I'm looking as we're approaching the 1030 prime time trigger time. So under this 260, it may go lower. I'm not saying it's going to go lower. It may go lower. It, it's in a limbo. And the reason why I say it may go lower is because it still has support that 50 SMA from the daily. 
and it still has this support right here. Okay, so it has so much support. We'll see how, how that's going to play out. But this is a bear sandwich. You got to play it. You see it, you play it. Uh, DV, yeah, that too. Is the market open? I love that. I know, is it? All right, guys, get ready. <coughs> By the way, my Nasdaq short has triggered. <laughs> I know, it's just, okay, now's the moment of truth. Now's the moment of truth. By the way, the S&P is doing the same pattern. So S&P may be weakening uh, below the 08. Uh, Russell is already making another leg down. We're going to put it back to the five minute here. See how this is consolidating below the support, but it's still support zone. So don't think that, oh my God, that's the line in the sand. No, the line is not like this. It's like this. So it's thick. Uh, I'm taking it in this, uh, I'm taking it with the 1030, uh, because we didn't have a reversal. We should be having a reversal, but if the market is weakening, the market is going to do probably another leg down. That's what I'm, that's what I'm seeing here because this is the bearish setup. This is the bear sandwich. So it looks bearish. So don't forget to put your stop. The 307 is the stop. I'm going to put an alert so you can have the visual right here. All right. There's no way we can add to the Dow, unfortunately. Yeah, Dow is still holding nicely, though. All right, so now we're hedging. Whichever works, one R here and one R here. So let's see. So we got five minutes into the oil inventory numbers. You got it, Bob. That's true. That's true. Oh my gosh, Bob. Yes. Bob is saying that this is the kind of day where it's easier to lose money rather than make money, forcing things out of boredom. That's completely true. But if we're in trades, we're going to stay in the trades.
Wow. Okay. Yes, very choppy day, bro. Everybody's waiting for tomorrow. We got to let these trades play out. All right. Still looking for opportunities to, uh, to do a little bit of damage control in YM and see if we can add here, but... And I was looking again uh, at a possibility, but it never went there uh, to get it. But see, you won't like that won't make a huge difference, you know, um, in the trade. Because I was thinking of adding over 400. But then again, you're lowering your entry with 10 points. It's not a big deal. All right, we still have our lecture to do and we have two minutes into 10.30. <laughs> I know. Jack, uh, NASDAQ short before 10 o'clock. The, the problem with it is that uh, the risk for the trade needed to be somewhere here into the 4.10. And your entry should have been below 40. And that's what I said in the brain market game plan, that if it trades below 40, you can start running towards uh, the 262. But I needed to see some kind of a setup here so I could have a tighter, uh, a tighter stop. To me, it was an inverse risk to reward ratio trade. Did it work? I mean, look, pull back to 260. You can't get it any better than this. So we have the level right there. It was not a trade for me because of the risk level. So risk is what literally is uh, keeping you from, um, if you don't respect that, you're in big trouble. So, all right, let's see what 1030 is bringing. We have 30 seconds to go. We're still in the Dow. I'm not making any changes to the Dow, by the way, not making any changes to the Dow. But let's see NASDAQ, we're going to work it out since we're in the short in NASDAQ and we're, just, we're getting some pretty big tails on the 15 minute, by the way. What's your stop, Stephen? In your trade, just curious. And tell me what, based on what criteria you decided to stop. See, now, even on the 15 minute, this NASDAQ is creating those tails. Feel free, Stephen, to share with the room. I'm, I was just curious to see what your stop is. You cannot talk about the success of the trade unless you have your stop and your position size. Dow still sideways. What if we remain sideways like this until tomorrow? I'm just saying. And if you guys want to post your trading ideas, feel free to post your trading ideas and what you're doing, but post them before they happen and not after the fact, because that doesn't matter, okay? No, I don't care how many contracts you guys get. Ooh. Okay. All right. No, the the number of contracts is irrelevant. What is, yeah. I do. Daniel, I still like it.
You like it over 95? Yeah, over this Teddy MA. Wait for wait wait until this candle uh completes. Okay, because that's that's gonna be telling. That's gonna be so. This is 1030. Typically at 1030, if you didn't see the price action continue to move lower. Uh, it may snap back up. So it may have a reversal. Remember that we had an attempt of a reversal at 10 o'clock. Okay. So 10 o'clock reversal came in, rotated in, right? So it came in, meaning it went into a buy, right? But then it went lower. This is what triggered. So if you're seeing weakness into 10 o'clock, if you're seeing that there are not buyers into the 10 o'clock, meaning there may be buyers into 1030, these are the two inflection times, 10 o'clock and 1030. So I, I'm not seeing like, I mean, I know it's only 1033 and the 1030 effect lasts typically for another like five to 10 minutes. But uh, I'm seeing a lot of sideways chop. Okay, so I, I would say, Daniel, don't rush into anything. Okay, Th this is the bigger. So in order for the price to prove bullish, it really needs to take out this 307, the top of the junky uh, area. And again, here, if it, you know, if it breaks the support at 60, then it starts sliding lower. I mean, what I was looking to do in the Dow is a little bit of a, damage control to bring our uh entry to kind of like a break even level because i'm seeing a lot of weakness develop okay so i'm trading in sync with the market momentum and also with the patterns and with the strong technicals that we have all right and uh just to let you guys know around 11 o'clock if the market is still going to remain like this sideways, we have our game plan, we have our stops, we have our targets, we are into the trade. So literally uh, at this point, there's very little interference from our side. Uh, and we're going to start with, so in about 30 minutes, we're going to start with the lecture. So you guys understand that I don't care how wide the stop is. I don't care if it's five points, 20 points, 50 points, 60 points. I don't care. There is a way to determine the size. And when I talk about the trade, about a trade, I'm not telling you I'm getting in with 60 contracts in the Dow and I'm scaling out 30 at target one. No, that, that, that means zero. That you may get lucky one day, but honest to God, look at her performance. How did you do it this year? Is your account up? And if it's not, if it's up, it's great. Don't change your thing. But if it's not up and you're doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same results. So I'm here to change all that for you today, once and for all. You learn this little trick. You could suck at trading and still grow your account and make a lot of money. Seriously. Rob, it's going to hit the brakes today. No, I know. And it was me too. It was me too. Don't think that, oh my God, I started trading and poof, I was profitable. Oh, every day I was making money. Oh, I was trading on the beach. I had my phone. I was trading. No, it was hard. But what I'm going to teach you from 11 o'clock uh we'll see how the price goes and we'll see how we can adjust that i will show you how to be consistently profitable there's this little piece that nobody's talking about and it's so frustrating because this is going to make you or break you as a trader it's like the holy grail if you will i'm not kidding you you can suck at trading. You can have 60% of the trades, losing trades. But if the 40% are winners, you can grow your account. I mean, this is mind blowing what I'm going to share with you guys.
Roth, number one rule, don't listen to anybody. Okay, oil inventory numbers are out. They have been out for about seven minutes. John, oh my gosh, this is like crazy here. Like I said, you know, um, the market is fairly sideways. NASDAQ is a whole lot weaker. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm telling you that 307, if we stop out of that 307, I'm thinking of reversing it and going long. And I don't often do that. Maybe once or twice a year, but I may be doing that. Papa Rooney, I know. There's a little poppery. The problem with these, um, yes, Daniel. Oh my gosh, Daniel, you're you're getting so amazing at trading. Like I'm loving it. Okay, so um, look at the thirty minute and uh, Daniel. When you see it, for example, on a five minute, okay, you see a lot of noise, right? Whenever you see that, try to zoom out until you identify the exact peaks and bottoms. Okay, so that means that you're going now to the 15 minute and you're still seeing a lot of indecision, a lot of doji candle. Okay, time to zoom out, go to the 30 minute and a 30 minutes like bingo. All right, now this candle is going to close in about 20 minutes, but this candle is has been or is, is already closed, right? So the high is 17. So what this tells you that anything over 17 is bullish. And if we're getting some bullish momentum, over 17, you're going to get a squeeze all the way to 20. So if it you get a print of 17, uh, actually 17 and a half towards 18, not 17, 17.5, 17.75, uh, or 18. Those are the acceptable entries. And you're getting a squeeze into 20, clearly. Okay, clearly. Your stop is going to go below this low. It's still going to be a very asymmetric trade. At the time of the trigger, very important, you're going to zoom it in on the two minute. And if you see like a pivot formation that is a little bit higher, so let's say you get that trigger at 17. Now, 17 and a quarter or 17 and a half, right? And if you're getting that trigger, you're going to look and say, hey, what is the last pivot of that form on a minor time frame? So you have less of a risk. Okay, so you don't have to give it a, like that whole big chunky risk. Okay, so that's that's what I do. So you're gonna get a much better risk to reward ratio. You're gonna get a probably one and a. a um, I would say you can squeeze in here easily with this type of risk. Let's say if at the time of the trigger this is gonna hold, um, you're gonna get a pretty good risk to reward here. Considering the day, I mean the day is just horrible so far. Okay. I mean, horrible in the sense of, uh, you know, things not progressing, you know, not going, you know, back and forth, just very shallow, unpredicted price action. Everything that goes, for example, even on the two minute, look at the two minute here. You got to get super lucky. This is not technical. This is Hail Mary. Anything that is trading into this shop is Hail Mary. You need, now we need to get it under 50. You can see here that we, um, uh, we got it at 60, right? And then I'm having the clues that the price action may go lower because we have high, lower high, lower high, lower high, right? So we may, may be getting bearish price action here. Gosh, I wish, you know, now I wish I would have loaded up a little bit so we can be out of, uh, out of the doubt. But you can see here, we have two trades, two hedges. So this is going up and this is going down. Crazy market. Typically, when you want to have a really good futures trade, you want to make sure that you see the indices all on the same pace. Not the teeter-totter that we're seeing today. It's like chop-chop. Okay. So uh, let's see. Let's see what we have for the rest of the day. But anyways. Yeah. Yes, TV. I just, I, I, I just love to see at least YM back into the break even and have a big slide into Nasdaq.
because the weaker, uh, and by, by the way, we're uh, right now in NASDAQ, here we go. And we cannot raise the stop to the doubt, which is so annoying. Yeah, Oilski. Oilski is going. Bill, I don't trade oil into oil inventory numbers, and I tend to stay away. I do the analysis on it, but I don't like to make official calls in oil just because it's so volatile. XOM, yes, XOM is gorgeous. We have it in the investing program, uh, into the swing program. It's very, very volatile and you could be up and down uh, it, just a lot. It could be, a, if you're a beginner trader, you don't want to trade oil. You don't. I even hesitate, hesitate into trading oil. It's not good for the health of the overall account. Uh, I mainly look at it for swing trading and we had a trade, uh, we had a swing trade from $79 that we killed uh, earlier. A little bit earlier. Uh, we, we made a lot of money into it. You got it. It's very jack. No, it's very slippery. And it's too volatile. And if you want to grow your account and if you want steady income, oil is not going to cut it. You got it. It's too slippery to accumulate those profits. All right. You mean here? What I want to see here, John, yeah, what I want to see here, because we had a clear signal of a pullback and we had a clear, and I mean, look at her, uh, look at her levels, guys. You, you cannot get it any better than this, right? You cannot get it. Go into a room and say, oh my God, it's going to go from here to here. What I typically like to see is not an avalanche down, especially that we had pretty good hold into the Dow. Uh, let me just get my pen here. All right, here we go. So typically what I want to see is I want to see it down and I want to see it hover below this support, okay? So I could have a defined risk because I'm not going to get in a trade if the risk is really high. I didn't want to put my stop over here, take my trade here and uh, have my target here, especially that it was a really wide area between uh, the breakdown and this. And Typically, I like to wait for either a base or a pullback, right? Or I'm sorry, uh, or a move down and then a retrace back up. And this would be the level or if, even if it goes a little bit higher, this would be the level. So I would have a very uh, small risk and a huge return. Okay, so that is how I trade. I just evaluate the market conditions. A lot. So just because I have a signal, you can imagine how easy it is for me to see a signal. And because I have these signals, I designed these signals, right? So you can imagine how easy it is for me to say, oh, I'm getting short here and this is my uh and this is my target. What would have what would happen if I wouldn't give you the stop? It would be a disaster. Okay, it would be a disaster. Yeah, so uh I need, I need to see a stop in the New York trading session. And I didn't have that. I didn't have a stop. I didn't have a pattern in the New York trading session. I just had a drama bar. I just had a little tape bomb that was like, boom, 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 three bars. Does that make sense? 
Of course I trade the cues. Of course I trade. I'm an extremely active stock trader. Extremely active stock trader. All right, so I hope that answered your question. Thank you for the explanation. Of course, you guys are welcome. Just let me know. Like I said, let me know if you have any other questions. Okay, in NASDAQ, oh, I think I'm going to be lowering my stop. I think I'm going to be lowering my stop. Not quite yet, but I'm considering the 295-ish zone, but I'm not doing it yet. You guys are going to hear it when I'm going to do it. Good job on Caterpillar. Good job on Caterpillar. When did you get Caterpillar? Did you get it yesterday? Great job. Great job. Yep. Great job. There were perfect setups. Uh, Bill, I like to trade only the Qs. I don't trade the T, Q, Q, Q. No. I just, I just like, I prefer the Qs. Oh my gosh, guys. What the heck is going on with this market? It's not, hey, Scott, uh, I posted in the room whenever we have the levels, these institutional levels, we haven't had them for a really long time because of the, either the market was ascending or descending, but uh, in a sideways market, these are very helpful. So yes, you're going to get them in the room. I walk you through every single day. Um. Uh, every single day through the trades and through the levels. Uh, is your chat room just like this session? Absolutely. It's 100% rod. It's 100%. Yeah, yeah, Not so much with the, and I would say it's not, a, it's not as disrupting because there are not many questions. You know, I would say it's better. What do you guys think? Do you guys that are members in the room, what do you guys think about the room? I mean, we don't have a lot of discussions outside of price action. Let me put it that way. <laughs> we don't have a lot of discussions outside of, it's rather pretty boring. We're just talking candlesticks patterns and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thanks guys. Oh, uh, thanks Jill. Hey Oscar, nice to see you in here today. Yeah, today totally stinks. It's a stinky day today. But we're having NASDAQ working for us. <laughs> okay, what, what the heck do we do with YM here? Okay, guys, eyes on the prize. NASDAQ started to work for us. All right. Did I give you, um, hey, Ronald, hi, I'm using Thinkorswim. You can use any broker, any platform on the planet. Okay, so did I give you guys targets for NASDAQ short? 
Okay, we said that we want it into the 218, which is the prior low of yesterday. So that 218, let's say the 220, we want to see it into the 220. That would be like a first target and it's a first major area of support. And we're going to bring the stop to break even as soon as possible so we don't risk on the trades. Let's see if we get, if we get any continuation here. 220 seems like a good target. And for a day like today, if you see 220, ugh, take it. It sucks. Today was, was a sucky day, was a really sucky day. Here's the breakdown in, uh, let me take this to the 30 minute. Okay, take this off. Yeah, 4,500, S&P 4,500, it may run to 4,500. Okay, here's the deal with NASDAQ. If NASDAQ is gonna have a print of 31, it will slide lower. Our entry is 260. We could start taking profits a little bit Let's see how the momentum is. If we see it under 230, let's, let's see if we get it under 230. If it hits 230, we're going 2023. Let's see, 230, you may go to 2023. We got our 230, but not quite under. So we have the 230. Okay, here's the 229. We should go to 220. Okay, let's go. Keep the stop, by the way, keep the stop in uh, hard stop in NASDAQ where we have it at the 340. All right, that's good. We close, we're punching lower. Take some profits into the 220. Like I said, the target, target is 220. We wanna keep it like, I mean, I'm a little greedy when it comes to targets. So I go like, oink, oink. All right. I like to keep things active on my side. So the Dow is still active, Dow is still on. Two minute bottoming tail. It's gonna close in 10 seconds. We need to keep the price under 40 to 45 at the moment. We need to see a print of 221, and then we can digest through the 220. We could actually go lower, but this is all. This is like a pray to the trading gods. So far, 233 three, holding one pinch into the 21 may send us below 20. So hold on to your underwear. We may be going lower. <laughs> Let's go. We have the 22.25 for the low. Come on. Take it below 20. Take it below 20. Go, go, go. Break the 20. Break the 20. All right. We're under 20. We're going lower. Let's see if we get the 200. Let's see if we get the 200. We have 10 points into the 200. Man, we're right on support now. <laughs> All right, just hold on, hold on, hold on. Stay the course, stay the course. I'm on it. I'll let you know when it's time to get out. Stay in. 
30 seconds into the next decision. 30 seconds. And we're going to be lowering the stop in 30 seconds. Thirty seconds. Oh, sorry. Ten seconds. Ten seconds into the next decision. We're playing with fire. We're playing with fire. Uh, trail two two zero two two zero and out 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 at two two zero. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, by the way, guys, I don't know if you noticed, we're still in the Dow. I hope it's good or bad. All right, so I'm going to go in the Dow, see if we can do some managed control to get out of it. We're holding literally by the ticks right here. We're holding by, we have a low of 43. I don't know if it's going to hold it. Oh, let's see, 42, 40. Let's see, 42, 40. Kind of iffy. Do you guys see it here? It's right on the pivot. It needed to break this pivot and close below. Uh, have this candle close below 20. And if we had a close below 20, we would have uh, we would have continued lower. It may still go lower, but into the 200. Quite, I mean, we had targets into two, uh, 220 and 200. We had a low of 207. I'm good with it. All right, YM, let's see. Let's see YM here uh, if we're getting a bounce. Man, I have, to, I have a feeling we're going to keep this one. If it's not going to stop us out and... Let's see. Maybe it's going to stop us out. I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, it doesn't look like it wants to hold. And here is NASDAQ. Below. I, I'm not going to take anything else right now. We played on, and by the way, we stayed in that trade forever. Thank God for the trading. Thank you, trading gods. All right. Let's see if we can do something if if the stop is going to hold in the dow if that 340 is going to hold in the dow and if we're getting some kind of a reversal see the reversal would be like into 1115 i don't think that we're going to hold the price i mean it's still a long time 15 minutes and it's just flirting with that 340 uh stop area We'll see. No, it's not going to hold. Momentum is down. We have a low right now, 45, 44. We're going to be taken out of this one. All right, 38 was stopped out. Why I'm stopped. All right. My goodness, we're never in the tra in trades this long. We're usually in the trades like 10 minutes, five minutes, and we're done. Like this was like, wow. This was like forever. All right. For an hour and 10 minutes, we have been in YM for an hour and 10 minutes. Seems pretty crazy. We have one down, one up. Okay, made money in NASDAQ, lost money in the Dow. Let's see. 
Uh, I wouldn't short NASDAQ here, by the way. I wouldn't try to go back into NASDAQ uh, because it's on considerable support, okay? It's on considerable support. I, I should have given like the Dow a little bit more wriggle room here to about 30 or so. See, let me explain the context of the Dow. You have considerable support. You have the 10 a.m. lows right into the 40s right? That's one of the reasons why we needed to put our stop a little bit lower than that. Uh, one hour, but this is like after the fact, so it really doesn't matter. But I just want to explain, uh, you know, the, you know, the strategy. We're retesting the prior support zones here. So it's still the 40s. And plus the daily, uh, take a look at the daily. The daily is right into the 20 SMA. So that's again, um, that's again a lot of support right here. Okay. All right. Like I said, I have that lecture ready for you guys, but I want to make sure that we have uh, used all our opportunities for today to make money. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to stock a scalp, a one hour scalp, which is pretty hard to do. Uh, John, you're, uh, yeah, uh, it should be good to 233. Three. Two, 230 to 233. And if you're getting the price over 233, it's going to go to 245 in NASDAQ. See, I navigated, uh, I navigated away from NASDAQ. Had I not had a trade in the Dow that I had to, uh, you know, uh, take my stop out and to see how it's trading, I would have definitely went back into NASDAQ long here. For, uh, for that one R, to recuperate the one R from the Dow. And that would be on a two minute. The five minute is a short squeeze on NASDAQ uh, here as well. But it's kind of like a Hail Mary and we're approaching, you know, kind of like the doldrums uh, I would have gotten Daniel on the two minute right here. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down rotation back to the 10 EMA. Michael, yay. <laughs> you took the other side. What did you do in YM? <laughs> you took it to the short side. Yes. All right. So that, that would have been it, but I, I started to manage this one right here because I wanted to see if we could add to it and I navigated away from NASDAQ. That's why it's better to focus on just one trade. But I'm glad that we went today in NASDAQ as well, even though it took like a freaking hour. Okay, the rest of the indices don't look very happy about a rotation. See, uh, this could be one right here, the risk to reward ratio. See, the risk to reward ratio was phenomenal in NASDAQ here. But see, the two minute is not very reliable at this point in time. Let's just wait just a little bit until 11.15 and then we can start our lecture. But NASDAQ 15 minute is ready to trigger. <clears throat> Sorry, five minute is ready to trigger. So we have one, two, three down, pin, and up all the way into the 40s. But we're getting weaker action into, wow, take a look at this uh, YM. Wow, this is just insane. Inside candle in oil, I'm just... Uh, Letting you guys know what I'm seeing here. If the price actions get over getting, if the price action would get over 15, it'll start going back up into the 50s. The stop applied would be 83. 
80. This could be this could be a rotation up or a sandwich down. But this is strong support here, so I'm not going to mess up with it. Here's an interesting fact about NASDAQ. Oh, I'm sorry, about Dow. If the Dow is going to break that 340, in fact, 335, 335, It's going to go down to 300. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know which is going to trigger first. We don't have a directional bias, so it's very hard to assume in which way, which way they're going to be going. I'm seeing a lot of bottoming tails, but these bottoming tails can hold as much. So if we're getting a break below these, tails look at the uh 30 minute i mean look the one hour is a little bit more evident i mean if we break below this 330 we can definitely slide lower so we have this void right here i don't know if it's going to do it or not because it was the strongest one today so i don't know it may or it may not See, everything is, is in a limbo right now. Two minute. Over 307. This could be a scalp. Three hundred six fifty or so, we could get a scalp all the way to forty five zero eight. I don't know about the velocity though. The momentum is kind of like shutting its doors at eleven fifteen, so you're not going to get that velocity to be uh, into the target. So that's going to suck. This is telling right here. This one is losing territory, gaining, losing. If we're if Nasdaq is going to do a short squeeze, it's going to work out great. Okay. Sort of like into a five minute sell pattern here. NASDAQ. So we have a clear pivot now in NASDAQ. The pivot is 227. So if we decide, for example, to short NASDAQ again, well, this is going to be crazy. What time is it? So see if NASDAQ is going to take out these lows again, you can apply a stop at 227, which is just above this red candle high. Oh, I don't know. So under 98 possible entry, stop 227. But look at this one, like why am I really trying to hang on? This is so difficult here. Uh, uh, GC Joe uh, 52. Yeah. Yeah, inside, inside float all the way to 53. Not a lot of room though, not a lot of room. See, I'm attracted to this NASDAQ short. Yeah, scalp, scalp, for sure, for sure, scalp. Uh, NASDAQ has room to go to 50, 0, 50. 
overall room and i'm not saying that's gonna go it can't go today i don't know but that's the um that's the macro target for it 200 is a huge level if we break below the 200 which means if we take it below 98 we can slide to 50 no first target is going to be 15 0 80 15 0 80 it's doing it now Yeah, and uh, s and is going to slide below 1,500. And YM, which was the strongest one, like I said, if it gets below 30, see, it's really hard to short the Dow because the Dow stocks are so strong. But... All right, I don't think I'm going to take another trade uh, here. See, like I said, I liked it over 98. This one was still holding. Under 30, this could be 420 for the stop. To me, this would be like a revenge trade to the short side. So why I'm short 330 and the stop 420. I think we're going to jump into the lecture because we're running out of time. Let these trade out and see. I mean, we had a pretty good run in NASDAQ. We had YM stop, so we're kind of like in a limbo here. I don't know how, I don't know if it will have the velocity to move that fast lower. Yeah, so see, I like this. I like this formation and I talked about it. I didn't take it. All right, let's jump into, uh, John, you did it. That's awesome. Sometimes revenge is good. <laughs> Sometimes revenge is good. Okay, so uh, what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to jump right into the... Okay. I just want to make sure that we got it here. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, here we go. And, and you can see here, NASDAQ is still stalling, so it's not really going anywhere. Okay. All right. Uh, I promised you guys that we're going to be talking about um, one trick here. Just hold on a sec. Okay, because I need to share the screen and I can't find it. I have so many screens open right now. All right. Yes, I am starting early tomorrow. So be here at nine o'clock. Be here at nine o'clock. Okay, because we have the CPI numbers. See, my revenge trade would have worked under 30 in the Dow. I chickened out of it. Okay. So guys, there's, so regardless of what trading system you're using, you need to definitely have a strategy. And that means a position strategy, because oftentimes you're going to jump into trade and uh, you're, you have no idea where your stop is. And you're going to say, I'm just jumping in here with three contracts. I'm jumping in here with five contracts. I'm jumping in here with I don't know, 10 contracts. But the reality is that you have no idea what your stop is. And a lot of times, and not a lot of times, 99.99% .99 of the times, futures traders think that if they have a certain account size, whether it's a prop account or their own money, uh, they can risk three contracts any given time. 
which is completely false, wrong. It's the wrong thing to do. You should never, ever, ever do that ever again in your entire life. Because if you have done that, and if you see that your account is not growing, uh, then that is the reason why that's not working for you. Even if you're a really good trader is because, or if you suck at trading, that's even worse. Uh, that is because you don't position sides for, uh, for your trade. So one of the most important things about trading is that uh, you need to uh, you need to use the same risk on each and every single trade, the same risk. So yesterday I was mentioning that traders um, should be using anywhere between one and three percent. You guys know your tolerance. However, I have to say that if you're a more experienced trader, you can go two percent or three percent. Um. I go with 1% for day trading and 2 or 3% for swing trading. So that's that's my style because day trading is a lot more riskier than swing trading. The levels of support and resistance that are throughout the charts uh throughout the smaller time frame charts are um are very highly to be tested. And then you could get often stopouts and the trade may fail a lot faster than in swing trades, okay? This is not like options. Options, to me, options are more of a Hail Mary type of strategy. I don't do options. I know very, very few, few really good options traders. And uh, they're even, they even have sometimes really rough patches, especially in the market context like today or uh, they're blowing up accounts when the market is sideways because they're betting on longs and shorts at certain levels that are not met. So that is definitely Hail Mary trading. Uh, so like I said, uh, I like to use for my day trading account 1% of my account. And you should use the same way. It doesn't matter whether I'm getting in with five contracts or 20 contracts. All that matters is that I have the same risk in my account. So to, in today's presentation and in today's lecture, uh, I will be talking about position sizing and a little bit about money management because you can have the best strategy in the world, but if you do not respect your position sizing and money management factor, you're going to blow up your accounts guaranteed. All right, so let's continue. All right. So the most important part of money management is position sizing. So position sizing is part of money management. In our course, we actually teach uh, money management and position sizing, which is uh, uh, which basically we talk on a broader scale of what you need to do, like on every uh, every stage. Uh, this is a shortcut, so you understand it. It, it just offers you an opportunity to get an idea of how to do it and actually implement it, okay? Keeping it super, super simple. So money management, like I said, it's one factor that if you respect it, you're going to grow your account exponentially and fast and constant. And you're, gonna, uh, uh, you're going to have that consistency in your trading. And it's not allow you to be all over the place. So for example, okay, you want to get into a trade. 99% of the futures traders don't put stops in. Or even if they put stops in, they put them in like weird locations that are meaningless. You can get lucky. For example, let's say with a trade to the long side or a trade to the, uh, to the short side. But the reality is, are you keeping those profits? Because statistics show that 97% 97% of the traders don't. And the reason for that is because they don't have a system. So before you have or develop your own trading system, whether it's by trial and error or whether you learn it from somewhere, you need one common denominator and that is position sizing. That is not going to allow you to blow up your account because that is the status place to be. So Aside from position sizing, aside of position sizing is how you manage your trade. Now, I showed you live uh, two trades today that I was in. I was in the Dow 
And uh, I had a hard stop. I had an entry. I had already pre-planned targets. So my structure, my trade was really thoroughly planned. That trade stopped because the price action after the trigger, it reached a stop and it stopped out. That is one R loss. That is 1%. It's not a big deal. It's just one trade in an ocean of trades. It's not significant. It's not something that is devastating for me. Had I not position sized and got into that trade, let's say with the 25 contract, and then if I would have stopped out, that could have been devastating. A lot of times futures traders um, are little, and I don't want to insult anybody here, and I'm a futures trader as well, but they're uneducated. People that are trading stocks are a little bit more educated because when you get into stock trading and especially into day trading, you put quite a capital at risk, right? And you need to have at least $25,000 or a little bit more than that because uh, if you open an account with $25,000 and you lose a penny, your day trading status is out the door. So you basically need to open your account with about 30, 35,000. So you're bringing a big chunk of money into the market. So you're educating yourself. A lot of times futures traders can open an account, unfortunately, with many brokers with just $500. And that is really a disservice to the trader. Now, I know brokers and probably, you know, their main goal is to get your money, to get your commissions, right? And to blow up your account. People that open and traders that open accounts with, you know, thousand dollars or five hundred dollars what do you think they're going to be doing position sizing that's the last thing on their mind they have big dreams and big hopes and they think that they're going to double their account in a day or a week well that's not really possible okay so i'm here to share with you our agenda for today why position sizing is key to consistency and by the way this is something that i teach to my students and you, uh, this recording is going to be active until Friday. And on Friday, we're going to take it all out. So if you want to take notes, we want to re-listen to this mini lecture, you can do that until Friday. So we're going to talk about how to determine your position size according to your account size. And this is the perfect time like to get a little pen and to get a notebook and write it down, okay? So you can have it in front of you. So the next day, tomorrow, or the next time when you're in front of the computer and want to take a trade, you take a look at that piece of paper and you take some notes and you know exactly what your position size is, how many trades you need to take per day, and, uh, and of course, how many trades you take based on the market environment. That's very important. All right. So um, the other thing is determining your risk tolerance. There are people that are trading their RAs, long-term money accounts, and uh, sometimes their accounts have, are six figures, seven figures. And in this case, you need to see what resonates with you and you need to apply a risk level that you're very comfortable with. And the same way goes to day trading stocks or to uh, and, and to investing. Risk tolerance is very, very important. And then the importance of calculating your position size and how do you calculate your position size? Now, all these concepts may be very new to you or you may go like, forget it, just give me a trade or call another trade. Uh, but no, this is more important than a trade itself because if you don't know how to take the trade, you're never gonna be successful at trading. And believe me, this makes a huge difference in your trading if you apply it. If you don't apply it, it's up to you. So... Uh, the feeling towards a trade should not determine your size. So for example, I have a very strong feeling, for example, in NASDAQ, right? I had a, a support and a pullback. So that suggested the, that NASDAQ was going to pull back from 343 all the way to 260. Okay. So I knew that that was going to happen if the price was going to break, right? But that the my feeling towards that short should not determine my size. It should not determine my decision whether to take the trade or not. So analyzing your trades in terms of risk to reward ratio allows you to focus on the most aspect of 
trading, which is position sizing, which needs to be part of that money management plan. And in fact, you know, a lot of times I'm, you know, thinking and thinking and thinking, it's like, you know what, all the manuals should start first uh, with money management and how you, how you need to pre-plan for your trading day. How many trades, how many of you guys in here and type of one in the room, how many of you guys in here uh, have an idea of how many trades you will be taking in a day? A cat on a calculated risk. Do you guys know type of one in the room or you just go with the flow and see what the market is providing you? Just just curious right here. Type of one if you know exactly how to calculate how many trades you need to take a day uh, based on your account size. Type of one and type of two in the room if you don't know that and you have been winging it all along. Because for those of you that have that have answered to you guys are going to be mind blown. I'm going to teach you my secret sauce of how I literally grew my account. It's the only thing that grew my account because I was not a perfect trader and I'm far from being perfect in trading. Nobody is achieving ever perfection in trading. Trading is always ever changing, ever moving. The conditions change. So you've got to be very honest with yourself. But even if you have a really bad strategy, this, by respecting the position sizing and money management, will keep you from blowing your account. Okay, so basically we're going to talk about now how much you need to allocate for each and every single trade. How much do we allocate per trade, right? So how much, and then again, we're going to talk about how many trades in a day. So. Too much risk and you can blow up your accounts. Earlier, I was giving you that example of people that are traders that are opening accounts with $500, $1,000, hoping that they're going to double that amount in a day or a week or a month. That it may not be possible if you're not position sizing. So what they're doing is they're hell marrying. So mean, meaning that they don't have a strategy. How is it possible for anyone that has a $500 account to risk 1% per trade, which would be $5? How can you take a trade with $5, even with micros? You would have to have a two-point stop, for example, if you're, I don't know, NASDAQ or something, okay? Anyways, then again, if you apply too much risk, okay, a big winner won't pay you for your dinner, right? So... Position sizing will determine how many contracts or shares, because this is applicable to uh, stocks as well, okay? And it shows you how many contracts or shares you're going to be taking uh, the specific trade with according to your account size and your daily loss limit. That's why prop accounts are so cool. That's why they have rules. And people go like, oh, I blew up my account. The condition, oh. you know why? Because they're not respecting the rules. If you respect the rules, you're going to make it. I was a prop trader. It has helped me so much. Being disciplined, respecting how many trades I take per day, having a well-calculated plan of, of position sizing and having a really thorough man money management. You guys saw when I got into NASDAQ today, how I managed to trade. I managed to trade. I lower my stop and I lower my stop and I lower my stop. I trail, I trail, trail. I have a trailing system that I use, okay? So number one, position sizing should be determined. I guess you guessed it, find out by your account size. So I want everybody in here to take a piece of paper, okay? Take a piece of paper and write down your account size. Okay, write down your account size. That's it. If you have a really big account size, okay, write it down. But consider your risk tolerance, your willingness to lose on a trade. Your, that would not devastate you because you could have like a million dollar account. And if you cannot stomach $10,000 risk per trade and you get, you can't wrap your head around it. 
then it's not for you. So start with a thousand. You can start small. It needs to be in sync with you. Guys, when it gets hot in the kitchen, right? You don't stay in the kitchen, right? It's, it's the thing. So if you feel that you have sweaty palms and you go like anxiety, you have anxiety when you're in a trade, when the trade goes against you, you're applying too much size. Do you see me sweat when I stopped out of YM? No. Why? Because that's not devastating. That's only 1%. That's not devastating to my account. It's just one R, okay? The success of the trade, and I was telling you guys earlier here, the success of the trade can only be considered in uh, can only be considered if you take risk into consideration. That's it. What if I told you right now that I made $10,000 in NASDAQ or I made $50,000 in NASDAQ? Let's just talk astronomical numbers. Would I be a good trader or would I be, would you consider me a hero? It's like, oh my God, look how much money she made. What if I told you that I risk uh, fifty thousand dollars to make ten thousand dollars in NASDAQ? Would I still be a good trader? No. So you need to make sure that you know where your stop is and where your target is and how you trail to squeeze those profits out. And even if you start with an asymmetric risk, I trade with this asymmetric risk all the time because I have a really Phenomenal win ratio. My win ratio, my average win ratio is 83%. So that means that I win on 83% of the trades. Okay, 83% win ratio. So that allows me to get into these asymmetric trades because I have a strategy that works and I apply it every single day in the market, period. But I also apply position sizing and that keeps me afloat and keeps on chunking uh, cash for me. So before you take any single trade, determine what your entry is, determine what your stop is, and determine the tradable void, meaning how much room does the trade have into the next target? Does it have room? And how much room? You can eyeball it and say, yeah, it has about two hours, three hours, a lot of times in this market environment, you can have a three R tradable voice, meaning the space from your entry to your target. And because you're not getting the market mojo, you may only get one R or half an R, which is fine still. Okay. But you need to have a wide void because if you're entry is very close to the resistance area, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to trigger a hit resistance and fall apart. How many times has it happened to you? I know it happened to me all the time when I was a real beginner. Okay. I would get into a trade. It was like perfect setup. I would get into a trade. I would, I didn't really look through multiple time frames back then. And I was just looking at my two minute or my five minute and that's it. I would ignore the higher time frames. And guess what? I would reach that resistance and the trade would fail. And I'm like, oh. doesn't it stop when you stop at a trade? I mean, it does, right? If the trade is asymmetric, if you're very new to trading, do not take the trade if you don't have a good win ratio, okay? Don't have a good win ratio, definitely don't do it, okay? If you see that your trigger is here, your stop is here, but your target is right here, don't take it. If you see your target here, then take it, okay? And a good risk, that good risk for the trade is when the trade has the potential to run two, three hours or more. Okay. Now, before initiating a trade, 
according to your obviously you need to have a trading plan right and it doesn't have to be a sophisticated trading plan guys like don't think that you have to write a novel if you're doing a trading plan okay uh but you need to determine your risk per trade and your potential reward do you guys want me to give you like a quick example of of a trading plan whether it's for stocks or futures like it's a one phrase trading plan. Just let me know. Okay, I'm gonna show you on the chart. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the chart and I want you to write it down. Okay, uh, let's do this. Uh, okay, let's do this chart because it's a little, oh, no, I'll do it here. Hold on, hold on. Okay, let's zoom in here. Okay. Write this in your trading plan. Okay. First of all, number one, determine the hours that you're going to be trading. Determine the hours that you're going to be trading. I don't want you guys trading all day. I don't want you guys to be like me. I traded all day and literally started way before the market opened closed way before the market closed. I needed my trading to work. So I was desperate. So I was just in the market all the time. You don't need to do that. Now understand it. Looking back, it's like, oh my God, I overworked myself, literally. So what you need to do is determine your hours. Determine 9.30 to 11.30, two hours. You're going to get chart fatigue if you watch the market all day especially if you're a day trader and it's not good for you because you're going to try to make up patterns been there done that trust me i don't think there is one thing that i haven't done so um I, look at the beginning i think in the first week or two i was in position sizing and then i was forced to position size because i had a mentor that would check my performance it was like ah your stops are all over the place your your losses are all over the place your losses should be the same so like like trust me <laughs> makeup patterns ah yeah yeah that's a thing makeup patterns okay so here's the number one thing determine your hours okay let's say from 9 30 uh to um 11 30 when the london session closes right uh if you have a full-time job if you're seeing this on recording watch the market at night between 9 p.m and 10 p.m because it's the futures market right all right so these are the hours so i'm selecting the hours uh uh for you okay number two you need to look at the market okay first of all don't have this big white chart over here okay don't have this big white uh, uh let's say time frame over here not white chart okay don't have this big uh time uh, this uh, this time frame just this time frame but make sure that you have multiple time frames lined up like so it's not rocket science and by the way if you're in my trading room i share with you uh my uh my setup and if you're using a think or swim platform, okay, if you're using a think or swim platform, you have it for free, okay, uh, right here, okay. So I share this with all my students and with all my trading room members, and I share way more than this. But anyways, by having, and write this in your plan, I need to have this layout on my platform, okay, take a snapshot. I don't care what uh, broker you're using. You can make them look very, very similar. This the one minute, the two minute, the five minute, the 15 minute. These are essential guys because you can see the price action and you can see how everything is lined, lined up and synced. Have you noticed that in the pre-market game plan, I am, hold on a second. All right. Oh, where is it? Okay, I can't see it. All right. Have you guys noticed that in the pre-market game plan, I always um, 
start with the highest time frame and go to the lowest time frame. And that is because I determine support and resistance. Okay. So number one thing in your trading plan is look at the daily chart. Number one, look at the daily chart. See if the daily chart price action is into support. Okay. So I'm looking here and I'm seeing it into support. Did I see it? It's right into the 50 simple moving average. Now, like I said yesterday, I used the 50, the 20 uh, simple, the 10 exponential, and I used the 200 simple moving averages here. Okay, this is, is something else that I use for investing. Okay, so now you guys can see that it's trading. Now, write it down. Every single time when the price hits a moving average, so when the price comes back into a moving average, all right, what do you do? You consider it that support. Okay, you consider it that support. So now this is support for price. And you can see why it's getting the wiggle on the one hour. You can see why it faked a little bit lower here into the 150 and now it's rotating back up, right? And you can see here why you're getting the little pinch, okay? So try to determine, number one, try to determine support and resistance on the highest time frame, on the daily chart. The next thing that you need to do is evaluate the price action on the time frame that you want to trade. So you can see how I'm jumping from the daily to a potential five minute, let's say. So I'm jumping from the daily to the five minute. So I know that there's support here. And then the next thing that you do is you look for a pattern that would bounce off of that area, okay? Look for a pattern that would bounce off of that area. These are a little bit more aggressive because this is the market condition. So yeah, I'm going to tell you this because this is the rotational pattern. So even if you miss the short, you can still take advantage of this snap, okay? You can still, when at, you take a long, a, a counter trend long should only be taken when the price action is extended, like you guys see here, from the 10 exponential moving average. Okay? And the target becomes this 10 exponential moving average. If you want to take the trade, for example, on the 15 minute, if that's your zip code, by the way, very successful traders. And I was forced to trade for about, I think about six months. My mentor, uh, my mentor said, you're not allowed to tackle any other time frame, but the 15 minute, you got to find trades only on the 15 minute. And I would wait and wait and wait and wait. This, these two charts right here, the five minute and the 15 minute are the most successful time frames. They're uh, they uh, offer you that stress-free environment. So if you're looking for a stress-free environment, this is for you, okay? Um, so as you guys can see, try to identify setups, whether it's a buy setup with a buy pocket or a sell pocket, okay? And that is the counter trend. So a counter trend trade should only be taken if you have uh, quite enough distance between your entry and that 10 EMA, okay? So that 10 EMA right here, for example. you If you're taking it on the five minute, consider the 10 EMA on that particular time frame, okay? And these are counter trend trades. Now, trade with the trend. All right, when you're trading with the trend, Anything that trades below the 10 exponential moving average is considered power trend down and the price action will just continue down. So in your trading plan, your trading plan should say, I will take any short setup that would line up below the 10 exponential moving average. Okay, because that's going to be into an ultra power trend. 10 AMA shows ultra power trend right here. The 20 SMA shows power trend, shows power trend. Okay, this is ultra power trend. So that means that there's more juice to the downside. Okay, so 
You see the differences here and write these two in your trading plan. So trade in sync with the moving averages. When the price is below the moving averages, think short. That's the conclusion. When the price is above the moving averages, think long. Okay. So for example, here, if we would get a snap above this 10 exponential moving average, where do you think the price is going to go? Where it's going to get sucked into? It's going to get sucked. This 20 SMA is going to suck the price right into it. If we, if this candle right here closes above this 10 EMA, price is going to get sucked into the 220, right into this 20 SMA. I use moving averages, not because I love to have spaghettis on the lines, of uh, 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 spaghettis all over, but uh, I use them because a lot of algorithms have programs that are reactive off of these moving averages. That's why when I see a moving average on a higher time frame, for example, here on the weekly, I freak out and I'm like, oh, I am not going to go short, especially when the price is holding that area. Can it breach it? Yes, it breaches it. If you're getting like bad CPI numbers uh, tomorrow, yeah, it's going to breach it. No problem. But it, if we close the day into this 10 EMA and if we hold into the CPI and if CPI is okay, if the numbers suggest that, yeah, it's going to be good for the economy, it's going to be good overall for price action, then you're going to see a snap above that 10 EMA. So trade in sync with the moving averages. This is valid for swing trading. It's valid for uh, day trading as well, whether you're trading stocks or futures, whatever you may be trading. Trade in sync with the moving average. So for example, uh, see, I think it's this chart right here. Okay, yeah, all right. So you see the price action dynamic hovered, hovered, hovered below the 10 exponential, moved down, caught a gap of air. What happens when you have a gap of air? The price action is gonna get sucked back into it. Price cannot stay extended from its moving average for a long period of time. It has to get back in. And if it's not snapping back in for a short squeeze for a reversal trade, then it's going to base. So the MA is gonna catch up. And when that price hits the MA again, the algos go wild and fire back to the downside. That's the reason why we shorted this. That's the reason why we shorted NASDAQ. And you can see here why we wanted a target of 200 this, and we got it, right? We got a target of 200, we got the target, right? It went into the 220, right? 220 was the target. It's a little, it was a little bit higher right here. It was in 220 in here. Now, what happened when we hit that, we hit this dotted line? We were so careful and we were like, oh my God, we're not gonna give money back. We're not gonna give money back. And we trailed it. Why? Because the MA was getting closer. The more stall we had here, the, the closer the MA would get. Take a, Remember when I was, uh, you know, just a little bit before this lecture, you can rewind if you're listen this, uh, listening to this on the recording. Uh, you can rewind and please revisit this section where I mentioned that this is a possible short, either under 210 or under 200. This would be the stop right here, 230. Here it is. Because it was getting close to the 10 EMA, releasing bubble there. Reversal alert, short squeeze alert. And what did I say earlier? It's back in here. If it pokes above this 10 EMA, it's gonna get sucked into the 20. But as long as it's staying below the, uh, below the 10 EMA, you take any shorting, uh, shorting possibility. Okay, you take any kind of short possibility. All right, so this should be in your trading plan. Always go long above pivot. Uh, always go long above moving averages. When the price is above the moving average, you think buy every kind of pullback, buy every kind of pullback. And when the price is below the MAs or EMAs, 
right? Whatever is dominant, because sometimes they like to move into the 20 and come back into the 20 and come back. They're completely ignoring the 10. And that's because it's not an ultra power trend. We're into an ultra power bearish trend right now in NASDAQ. But sometimes it likes to shift into the 20. Look where the dominant is. All you have to do is look at a chart. That's all you need to do. So before you initiate a trade, make sure that you identify where the entries are and you need to learn setups for that. So I hope that helped you a little bit into your, uh, into your um, creation of a trading plan. That is the simplest thing that you can do for your trading position sizing and have a system. So now you have a system because part of a system, at least, because you know that you're not going to go long, not unless you have a gap of there, right? And you're going for a very short momentum to that 10 EMA, for example, that I showed you. And now you know that you're going to short every kind of opportunity you have from that 10 EMA. Okay. All right. So make sure you know where you enter, your stop, your target is, your risk and reward. And here I have some examples. Okay. So this is the breakout example. This is the stock of NVIDIA, but it doesn't matter. You know, you're pretty much uh, going to, uh, uh, you're pretty much going to have this setup happen, whether it's a daily chart, whether it's a one minute chart or a five minute chart or 15 or an hourly chart. These setups are there. This is the breakout strategy. It's actually my favorite strategy uh, to trade, the breakouts and the breakdowns. And we had one breakdown today in NASDAQ. Luckily, it worked because in this environment, like, poof, all right, kind of crappy. Anyways, so here's the breakout. This would be your entry. This would be your stop, all in all. So uh, your risk is determined by the difference between your entry and your stop. But wait, because it's, it's going to get a little better, okay? So for example, here, this is a stock, I know, but you have, for example, on a hundred, uh, you have a hundred dollar risk, right? You have a $10,000 account, right? So remember when I told you guys, write down your account size, write it down and determine what is 1%, what is that 1% of my account size? What is that 1%, okay? And write it down. Okay, so 1%, if you have a $10,000 account, right? That is $100, okay. Uh, so, 1% per trade, your risk is $280, right? Minus $260, that's $20. So you take that $100 risk divided by 20, right? The difference here uh, between the entry and the stop, right? This is the entry and the stop. It's always the difference between the entry and the stop. And that is your position size. So you can take this trade with five shares and you can have a $100 account. Uh, if you have a $100 risk, that means $10,000 account. If your risk is $1,000, and you can see the difference right here, right? You're still using 1%. Remember, the size needs to remain the same. Whether you're choosing 1% or you're choosing 2%, you're going to choose that until your account grows by 50%. So in this case, your 1% is going to be with 50 shares. Okay, because you position size, you divide, you can see the 20 right here, uh, $1,000 divided by 20, that is that is the amount of uh, the difference between the entry and the stop, that will give you the amount of shares, okay? Okay, yes, there is a link provided, okay? There is, uh, I will send out the recording, the recording is going to be available till Friday, so make sure that you take notes, we're going to take it down, we share a lot of really hot information here. Okay, so is the uh, is the trade worth taking? That's another question, right? Well, if you risk twenty dollars, the reward could be three twenty uh, minus two eighty, so that would be sixty dollars. So that would be three times, right? Two, four, six. That would be three times your risk. So yeah, of course, take it because it has that three R. You're risking twenty. Let's say you're risking twenty bucks, but you're making sixty bucks. Right. All right. 
Um, the success of the trade can only be measured in terms of risk. If you're coming here and telling me, uh, if you're telling me that uh, I took, uh, I don't know, S and P short and I make, uh, I and I made two hundred dollars, that to me doesn't really matter that much. Not unless you give me a complete explanation of the trade, where you had your entry, where you had your stop. And what your tar what kind of target you sh uh, you actually are shooting for? I don't care where you scale out, where you didn't scale out. I just want to make sure that um, the trade that you took was a correct trade. Because oftentimes we could get into a hail mary type of trade. You can make money, and then in the next five to ten days, you're going to lose and blow up your account. Okay, I've seen it all. All right, determining your risk tolerance, right? Like your sweet spot, a spot that is not going to really affect you psychologically and say, oh my God, I'm going to take this mess. I'm going to throw it out the window because I lost in trade, okay? Or I'm going to throw something on the floor because I get mad. Don't get mad at trading. And if you keep the stops the same on every single trade, you're not going to have to do that. The risk is co correlated, like I said, with your account size. You should be taking 1% if you're not consist a consistent trader. I'm a consistent trader and I still use 1% because uh, uh, day trading carries a lot more risk than swing trading. And now that you have that amount all set up, remember I was asking you guys, do you guys know how many trades you should take per day? Okay, so here is what you need to do based on, and that's the reason why you are going to risk 1% on a trade. Because each, when each and every single day trader that trades, and this is a formula based on which algorithms operate as well, uh, they typically take, they have, uh, they have uh, our segments. So for example, for the morning, they're not allowed to take more than five trades, okay? Some of them, the, the, the heavy duty ones. Uh, there are algos that are trading on literally micro moves and they execute thousands of trades before we even see a setup, okay? So there are two different uh, types and there are many types of algorithms. We don't have time today to talk about those. But the most important thing is that you need to allocate and to, and to come into the trading day with enough ammunition because... A lot of traders come into the day and say, I'm going to risk my, I don't know, 3% and I'm going to take a trade. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I quit. That's not a fair game and that's not a fair plan. What you need to do is come prepare for your trading day and allocate at least three to five trades every single day. That does not mean that you're going to be taking five trades in a day. I simply give myself five trades a day. So basically that would represent 5%. And I'm telling you the conditions in which I am risking that 3% or 5% on a day because I risk 1% for each and every single trade. If I come in the trading day and if I have one trade that has stopped out, that means that I lost one R. If the trading environment is right, I'm coming with another R to risk if the trading environment allows me to, that is not necessarily for me to take another trade. Because if I see that the market is sideways and choppy, and if the market was today like the Dow was, I would not be taking a second trade, for example, right? If I would have stopped out, I would have taken my loss and done. But if I see another juicy opportunity and literally I cannot stand the thought of not taking that trade, then I would risk another R. So I would use another bullet. So you need to have enough bullets based upon the market environment to go after your trades. Okay. Now, another very important element is deciding how many trades to take per day. We talked about that. And that is allow yourself three to five trades. You decide, you decide whether it's three or five trades, but don't come into the trading day saying, I'm only going to take two trades because sometimes if you're doing these short squeezes, if you're doing these market reversals, uh, the first time or the second time around, um, and like I recommended last uh, yesterday, uh, take them with half the risk because they are a lot more riskier and they have the tendency to stop out more often than other trades that are set up, that are going with the trend, okay? For example, NASDAQ is 
right now at that 10 EMA. Keep in mind that today, okay, let me just share that chart. Okay, just one second. Keep in mind that today, NASDAQ never violated the 10 EMA, never. Now it's the top of the hour, it's 12, and NASDAQ looks like it wants to break the 10 EMA. Remember that yesterday we had a massive reversal around this time? Well, it may be possible. So when you see that you, the price action is trying to violate this 10 EMA, immediately zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, because you may have a short squeeze. Here's the short squeeze right now happening. So if the price action is going to take out, I'm going to put some alerts here. So show you how the trade will work out. Okay, so you need to see it above this 15 minute high. I just want to take a quick peek. Uh, yeah, this would be like the, oh, oops. Okay, so here would be the plan, this perfect planning. All right. Okay, you guys see that I have two alerts, right? One is coming from the 15 minute. Okay, one is coming from the 15 minute DV noon balloon. All right. So when the price action takes out this 86, the price action will be sucked into this level 93, which corresponds with the trigger on the 30 minute. So you can see the beauty of multi time frame, right? Beauty of multi time frame alignment. And then if it takes this out, it's going to go get where? Sucked into the 10 EMA on the 15 minute which was pretty cool, right? And then this would be the target. You see this dotted line, that's a pivot. So you would put a target over here. So I just pre-planned your trade, okay? I just pre-planned your trade. And here on the five minute, going back to the, uh, back to the, uh, I'm sorry, not the five minute. I don't wanna confuse you, 15 minute. Here, you would take the trade with half the size, half the size, okay? So right here, this would be half the size. This, you would add another half the size right here. So you would initiate the trade at 86 with half a percent. So for example, if you want to take the trade, for example, with $500, you would get in with $250 risk here, but I will show you, I'll get to that, how to position size. And then $250, you're going to add back in here over this high. Okay, so this high right here, $250 risk, and this guy, the stop is going to be below these lows. So you see the stop 46 right here, 0.5, you take it two points below. Okay, you don't want to get dinged out. You see a lot of tails in here, that means volatility. So that means you're going to be taken out. Okay, this is going to be your target. Why? Because it, you have uh, the declining 50, uh, you'd have the declining 10 EMA. Is that clear, guys? Is that clear? Right, you, the price is extended from any kind of MA and for the closest MA, all right? Right, you, the price is extended. I, I just talked about it for the last 10 minutes. You need to see, we talked for the bubble of air. We talked the bubble of air. Okay. All right, cool, guys. All right, so that's, how you pre-plan your trade. You need to have your stop, you need to have your target, and you need to have your uh, entries. And because it's a short squeeze, you need to get really good entries, right? All right, we talked about tolerance. Okay, we talked about, okay, so now, for example, I don't know if I have it written down here. Uh, okay, so for example, if you have a $500,000 account size, if you're applying 1% risk, that's $5,000 risk per trade. That is the only unvariable, okay? That is the only unvariable. I'm not going to risk 5,000 today and tomorrow I'm going to come in with 7,000 or the next day I'm going to come in with 2,500 because I'm, I really don't feel that the market is going anywhere. Feelings have nothing to do with patterns and rules. Rule is a rule. You don't break the rule in trading. You get arrested by price action. Price action is going to arrest you. Okay. And you don't change the, uh, you don't change 
anything in your training. Okay, here's an example. Okay, here's an example. This is the mini FM page, just like the example that I showed you, but this is with the trend. The example that I showed you is the counter trend. Okay, so this is the entry, this is the stop. You can see where my, where my stops are. They're not in my brain. Okay, and they're not like monetary saying, oh, she told me to risk $500. By the way, NASDAQ triggered. Uh, Oh, she told me to risk five hundred dollars, so I'm gonna look at my PL. And if I see that it drops to five hundred, I'm just gonna take myself out. No, you position. So I'm just gonna show you in a second. Okay, so entry, stop, target. Okay, so position sizing math for futures is a little bit different than in stocks, and that is why this is the reason why traders blow up their accounts. Okay, by the way, the second trigger kicked in. We're going for the target in NASDAQ, okay? Um, so yeah, it's a little bit different. And that's why, you know, a lot of traders don't put in the effort. Not that they don't want to because they had no freaking idea. Nobody taught them because everybody's talking about, oh, I created this strategy. And by the way, I have not created any strategies. I have learned the classic strategies that have been taught for tens and tens of years and they still work to this very day, super successfully. I didn't have to invent anything. You don't have to invent a strategy and don't go, don't go by all the fake gurus out there are saying, I created the strategy. I created this strategy. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? Do you think that hedge funds invent strategies? No. Do you think that uh, like Warren Buffett invents strategies? No. These strategies are here and these strategies have been working for tens of years literally, if not hundreds of years, technical analysis has been around for hundreds of years. Candlesticks have been around for thousands of years. So the main thing is to stick to a strategy that you know and just perfect it. Get into that perfection, master it. I, for example, love breakouts and breakdowns. I, I kill for that. I absolutely love breakouts and breakdowns. I love short squeezes because they're so easy to identify. You look for a gap of, of that gap of air. That's it. Hamal, that's partly true. And do you know, because I'm always thinking uh, the work, they work the risk money management. True. Uh, but do you know something that is so interesting about hedge funds? They don't use stops. They don't use stops. And just like Amal said, they're managing. They're doing damage control. Remember we wanted to do the damage control in, in, uh, in YM? I was looking to do some damage control contingent on holding the stop. But because the stop didn't hold, I didn't want to work it out. So bottom line is that, uh, all right, here it is. Okay, bottom line is that you need to calculate. I'm going to show you uh, an example in a few seconds. So for example, for a $500,000 account, we offer this as a prop fund, a prop account as well. Your risk per trade should be $5,000. You have a $50,000 account. Your risk should be um, uh, uh, $500. You have a $10,000 account. Your risk per trade should be $100. But let's say, for example, here, okay, you have a $500,000 account. I do provide the calculator here, which was developed by one of our traders. How cool is that, right? So, for example, you have a $500,000 account. Your risk per trade is $5,000, right? So, for $5,000, let's say you have a stop of 13 points. This is the number of points that you have. Let's say you have a stop of 13 points. So 13 points would be somewhere between 10 and 13, uh, 10 and 12, right? You could consider it the 12. 
and you could take the trade with eight contracts. The, so basically you're risking 5,000. You get the picture. So you're not gonna have random contract sizes because for example, if you have $5,000 risk, if you have a, let's say a $50,000 account, many traders go in with three contract standard. And sometimes they have a four point stop. Sometimes they have a 10 point stop. Sometimes you may have a swing trade with a 20 point stop or a volatile day of 25 point stop. It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. So the, the risk amount doesn't matter. What matters is to use the same amount and position size and see what what is the size that corresponds with your with your stop and that's going to bring you consistency i have an example here uh from let's say uh from january is this uh, this example is from january but you can see here my risk per trade my personal risk per trade is five thousand and you can see here i got 14 contracts 12 contracts 12 contracts six contracts five contracts 12 contracts 10 contracts five five ten five 10, 10, 10, whatever, okay? So you can see here that I have wins, I have losses, I have wins, I have losses here, wins, loss, but none of my losses. And by the way, if you see a loss here that is 3,900 or 3,000 or 3,600 is because we reduced the stop, but we started at 5,000, okay? All right. So same here with uh, with stocks, if you're trading stocks, right? Same here with stocks. You can see that the size varies over here. So you can see here that I took this, um, uh, I took this buy here with a thousand shares. I took this PayPal here with 2,200 shares. I took this with 4,000 shares. I took this with 600 shares, right? I took this with 10,000 shares. So it varies. You're not going to see me a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. But that's not position sizing. Okay, that's not position sizing. You can see here as well. The size amount varies. The only invariable is what? My size. Okay, my size. All right. So, okay. So let's get back on track because I want to show you something else. Okay, just give me one second. Okay, I'm going to put this on. And okay, so we're going to be done in a couple of minutes. Hey, Brenda, uh, uh, Brendan, yes, of course. Okay, Here, here's another thing that I want to share with you guys. All right, so if you decide to opt for the futures trading room, I'm going to show you what you can get because we talked about position sizing, okay? So in the trading room, I, I like to keep myself accountable. I'm not keeping it for anything else than myself, trust me. So I don't think anybody can really use my track record, but it's nice to have. Uh, there are not many people that have it. Uh, I like to keep myself accountable for trading. I've always had a trading journal and you know, maybe tomorrow we can talk a little bit about having a journal, how important it is to have a trading journal because you can auto correct yourself. You don't need anybody from the outside to say, hey, you did this wrong. So you can identify what you did wrong and what you did right. So anyways, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, uh, position sizing in here because um, we do provide a risk calculator that was developed for uh, by one of our traders. And I'm forever grateful for that because it's a fantastic and a lot of my members are using it. I, however, have a template that I have on my desk and uh, I don't have time to scroll through pages and I just look down, see the size, take the trade. So if, if I have like a round number, like if I have, um, you know, 100 points in the Dow, that's super easy or whatever. But sometimes you have like weird uh, numbers. I have my 
calculator here. I calculated immediately, so um, I know what size to get. So basically, we have a track record. This is basically all the trades that we take in the room. This is January, February, and so on, and it gets into um, you know August pretty much. Uh, what I want to share with you guys is what we have on the bottom here. And this is the monthly performance. This is my performance. So I like to share it with my traders. I risk uh, $5,000 per trade and it shows you, you know, um, how I performed uh, through the months with the gains, with the losses, with everything. And by the way, we more than doubled our account in less than six months more than doubled our account in less than six months by position sizing. It's the only thing that made it. And you have another tab here at the bottom that says risk management. And if you scroll here to the bottom, we provide you guys with two amazing calculators. This is um, a risk calculator for futures. And this is a risk calculator for stocks. You hover your mouse over it. It's going to take you right here. And for example, let's say you have a $50,000 account, right? And this level right here, this little space right here is going to show you um, how much you need to risk per trade if you want to risk uh 0.5%, if you want to risk 1%, if you want to risk 2%. Okay, so you want to have that calculated risk that is going to really break you towards the next level, get you to the next level. Let's say I want to risk 1%, so I'm going to put $500 in here. Okay, so let's say, for example, okay, let's say, for example, we had uh, we had a trade that had, let's say, 20, let's say 20, 20 point stop in NASDAQ. Okay. Let's say it had 20 point or 40 point stop in NASDAQ. Let's choose it a little bigger, right? A bigger stop. So this is the 40, right? And you go here like to NASDAQ and you can see, man, I can't take this with a full size contract, but I can take it with micros. So I could take six micros. Do you guys see the difference? Like a, a like a new trader, the one that hits of the, um, uh, hit the jackpot, you know, uh, hits the bid with a long position. And if they lose, they lose huge or they freak out and they lose and then they go long again and short again and long again and short again. But in reality, if you position size, you trade stress-free, calmly, you know, you know your parameters. And that's what the trading room is all about. I provide a risk-free environment. And again, I tell my traders that if you don't have a system that works for you, just take my trades. Just blame me. Okay? Just blame me. And I'm telling you, everybody does really good. So in this uh, context, you're taking the trade with only six micros. Okay? Now, for example, if you have a trade, let's say an S&P. And if S&P has a stop of seven, uh, seven points, uh, you can, with the same risk of $500, because this you don't change, not unless your account grows with at least 50%, okay? So you can take the trade with, oops, sorry, uh, with the yes, you could take it with one full-size contract, one full-size contract, which is a little bit more convenient than taking it, for example, with 14 micros, I understand that with micros, you can scale out, but if you're using a broker like Ninja, like uh, Interactive Broker, like TradeStation, they're a little bit better on the commission side, but if you're trading off Thinkorswim, that's not really going to be a good option for you, okay, because it's a little bit more pricier. Uh, so this is how you position size, okay? So when you get in the trading room, you get rules, for example, you get guidelines, for example, you know, what a soft stop is, targets, how to do them, uh, management, uh, exits. So we talk all about canceled trades so you know exactly what we're talking about. So everything, it has 100% full transparency. Like I said, we provide the funding. Uh, we have the rollover date. So there's no guessing. We're like, oh my gosh, what a con I wonder what contract we're going to be trading in the trading room. So you go very quickly, for example, uh, in the indices and uh, 2023, for example, and you can see, you know, all the expirations, where the rolls are and all that stuff. So there's not a surprise. So, you know, at each and every single, uh, each and every single time uh, when you, uh, what you're trading and when you're trading. Uh, these are option expirations. Uh, we have uh, a system for the uh, option expiration. Uh, we know what to expect. 
Uh, we know that the price action is choppier as we're going in DV old. So highlighted here in the room that the price action may become choppier because next week we have the option expiration. Uh, and you're seeing the price action in a roller coaster, but we still have time from the CPI numbers to the option expiration to still have some pretty good juicy trades out there. Uh, we provide you platform layouts for the thing for swimming. When you become a member, you just uh, uh, highlight this, you copy it, and you apply it to your Think for Swim uh, platform, and you have the same layout that I have. Uh, you have uh, also charting provided by uh, Transpider. Um, I use a lot of these charts when I share on social media. I like, I love these charts as well. These are the holidays. Uh, you have, oh my gosh, you have uh, indicators here that we use, uh, limit down information. This is the, a full presentation right here. You get access to Discord. The reason why we, we do offer uh, you guys access to Discord and a private Twitter feed, and that is because, um, am I sharing this chart? Okay, because I'm getting, okay, I'm sharing it. Okay, cool. Oops, sorry. Just took it down accidentally. All right. So uh, the reason why we have it is because, and then I want to share with you something else. Um, the reason why we have it is because uh, sometimes, let's say there is, you know, there is a power outage where my internet goes out. So I could still communicate you guys via phone. Uh, so on my cell phone, oftentimes I try to make my phone as a hotspot. So try to get in, but it doesn't hold the, um, it really doesn't hold the, um, um, probably it's the bandwidth. I don't know what it is, but I can't really, uh, I can't really do it. So I'm going to share in here. Oops. Uh, just give me a second. Okay. Uh, we also have, uh, like I said, a private Twitter feed and I'm going to share it with you guys right now. So in case there's something happening overnight or, you know, um, some information that I want to get, uh, get to you guys and, uh, uh, the room is not open and I want to communicate these facts with you guys before the market opens, or if we're in a swing trade, I provide updates, uh, here because the room is closed and I don't want you, I don't want you guys to get into, uh, to guys to be, to be in the dark. Okay. So this is our, uh, private Twitter feed. Uh, right here. So for example, on August 6th, you know, I send out some information, RTY roller coaster for August. Let's hope August 2023 will be better than historic prices that we have been here. We're just trying to break outside of the multi-year uh, multi chop. So I was sharing some charts over here. This is the, uh, this is the breakout. Uh, this is the seasonality of Russell. So you can see here uh, that we have tapped into multiple lows. So yeah, uh, and you can see here that at the beginning of August, it has the tendency to pull in right here to pull back. And then toward the mid to the end of August, it has the tendency to move forward. And this is Russell. So again, I share the seasonality for NASDAQ. I share the seasonality for S&P, uh, seasonality for YM. Here's YM. And I was telling you guys that YM is stronger. Okay, so here's the dip. And then it's gradually going up for the rest of August. Now, remember, these are historical calculations. You know, things may, things may a little bit, uh, things may be different. So I shared here another, uh, uh, oops, another chart. You guys can see it here, uh, oil on a macro level. This is also on uh, August 6th. Okay, and with the room to run. So uh, basically over 82, 80, it has room to run to 94. And I was telling you guys earlier, so you can actually rewind this video and you could actually compare what I said to what I'm presenting right now. And oil, gold sandwich on the four hour, this was the igniting momentum that created the, um, the move that is actually continuing through today. And you can see like all these charts, informations, uh, information, like we had, uh, you know, results over here. So uh, I sent this to my traders, okay, with uh, the win ratio and all that stuff. Um, a little video in here. Okay, some charts, so you get the picture, you know, uh, what we have going on. 
All right. So what else do we have here? Um, that's pretty much it, guys. This is the pretty much a wrap for today. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Oops, sorry. Uh, all right, let's get back to the screen. Okay, remember that just a quick recap of uh, the idea that I was posting earlier to you guys. I was telling you guys about the short squeeze possibility. All right, so you can see here at stage one of the trade, stage two of the trade, and it's working itself up to 200, um, to the 200, uh, 200 and the 210. Uh, again. So let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm pretty much done for today. So if you want to check out the trading room, um, uh, we can talk tomorrow about it, but you could go to our website. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, our uh, TradeLA support has posted in there. It's tradeLA.com forward slash services forward slash trading room. All right. Uh, Jack, we do this. We, I don't take a break. I don't take a break, Jack. So uh, I usually come in front of the computer around 8.30. At 9 o'clock, we open the room. I come on the mic around 9.15. So I wait for that 15 minute from 9 o'clock to 9.15 to, and I do my calculations, my level. So I do a lot of homework. And then I come on the mic probably 10 minutes uh, to the uh, start of the day to give the uh, concentrated game plan for the day the levels, whether we're going to be bullish, bearish, or neutral, uh, the levels that we're looking at, and then we're waiting. And pretty much sometimes we're just, uh, we're done in 15 minutes, and then we shut the room down and hit the road to the beach. Uh, sometimes we're here until 1130, but typically the room runs to 1130. And uh, if we're in a trade, we're going to leave the room open until the we're out of the trade. So I'm not just going to take off. Okay, so I hope this session helped everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so let me know any questions. Did I miss any questions? <laughs> hey, Joe, thank you. Oh, thanks, Randy. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to share what I look at in the market. Oh, really? I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. By the way, take a look at this. Ta, 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 ta. I didn't personally take it because I was doing the presentation. Okay. Because it's an open house. So I needed to, um, to share some information with you guys. So you could see the value of the education that we provide to see the value of the trading room that we, the value in the trading room that we provide, but definitely you can see it right here. Ba -pum. Okay. Oh, Randy, you took the trade. Awesome. It's a great trade. It's a great trade. Here's the 200. It may squeeze a little bit into the 210, but that's it. That's frothy, frothy zone. All right. But you, you guys can see. So you get it with half the size, full size here at the other half in as it's going in your way. So you're not averaging down. This is not damage control. This is uh, rolling into the trade. It's not rolling out. It's rolling in the trade. Okay, so thanks so much, everybody. Uh, I really hope that you guys, uh, you know, uh, took away some important points from today. Remember, the recording is going to come out later tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow, right and early at 9 o'clock. We have the CPI numbers at 830. The room is going to be open, obviously, earlier, but I'm going to be on the mic at 9 o'clock. Be here at Sharp because we may be done really early tomorrow. Just FYI. Okay, I don't know how the day is, but let's hope we're going to get some action from the CPI numbers. It's going to, uh, we're going to have a lot of volatility uh, at the start of the day. So thanks so much, everybody. I will see you guys tomorrow in the trading room at 9 a.m. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.